Hey there! I'm a food blogger, and I'm excited to explore the local cuisine here in Chaozhou. Hi, I'm a travel industry professional, and I'm happy to show you all the food hotspots in town. Great! I've heard that Chaozhou is famous for its seafood dishes. Where should I start? Definitely try out the shrimp paste hotpot, which is a popular Chaozhou delicacy. It's made with fresh seafood and spicy shrimp paste broth. Yum! That sounds delicious. Are there any unique snacks or desserts that I should also try? Sure. Check out Lao Diao, a sweet and chewy rice cake, or Feng Gao, a steamed rice cake served with a sweet sauce. Sounds like a perfect way to end a meal. What about drinks? What do the locals usually have? Chaozhou people love their oolong tea, so you should definitely try some. It's light and refreshing. I love tea, so that's perfect. How about the dining culture here? Is there anything I should know before I dig in? Be ready to share dishes with others at the table. It's a common practice to order multiple dishes and enjoy them family style. That's good to know. I'm always up for a communal dining experience. So, what's your personal favorite Chaozhou cuisine? Oh, it has to be the oyster omelette. It's crispy and savory and makes for a perfect brunch. Wow, it seems like there are so many amazing food options in Chaozhou. Thank you so much for showing me around. It's my pleasure. Enjoy your culinary adventure here. Wow, the view up here is phenomenal. Have you ever seen anything like this before? No, never. I'm so grateful I finally made it up here to see Mount Fuji. Do you come here often? I do, I'm a travel photographer, so I come here quite frequently to capture the magnificent beauty of this mountain. That's incredible. Do you have any tips on how to take the best photos of Fuji? Absolutely. First of all, you want to make sure that you're here at the right time of day. Sunrise and sunset are the perfect times to capture the stunning color of the sky against the mountain. I see. And what about the composition of the photo? It's important to try and include some interesting foreground in your shots, like the trees or anything unique that catches your eye. Wow, that sounds like great advice. Do you have any tips on how I can improve my photography skills? Of course. One tip I have is to experiment with different angles and perspectives, and don't be afraid to get up close to your subject. That's excellent advice. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with me. No problem at all. I'm always happy to help out fellow photography enthusiasts. And hey, let's take a photo together, shall we? Absolutely. That would make an awesome memory to take home with me. All right, let's strike a pose and smile for the camera. Hi there. How's it going? Hey. Good thanks, how about you? I'm doing well. So, what have you been up to lately? Just digging through some big data sets looking for some valuable insights. What about you? Same here. It can be overwhelming at times, but it's always a fun challenge. Totally. So, how do you approach your analysis? I like to start with a clear objective and then work backwards, figuring out what data is relevant and what isn't. Ah, smart. I tend to take a more exploratory approach, just digging in and seeing what patterns and trends emerge. Nice, yeah, I think that can also be effective. Speaking of mining for insights, have you come across anything interesting lately? Actually, yeah. I've noticed some interesting correlations between social media engagement and purchase behavior. Oh wow, that's definitely worth exploring further. Have you isolated any particular platforms or metrics that seem to be most predictive? Yes, actually, it seems that Instagram likes are highly correlated with purchasing behavior, which could have some interesting implications for our marketing strategy. That's fascinating. Have you tested any campaigns based on that insight yet? Not yet, but I'm planning to pitch some ideas to the marketing team soon. How about you? Anything exciting come up in your analysis? Yeah, actually. I found some interesting patterns in the data around customer churn behavior. It seems that customers who cancel their subscription are highly likely to have certain types of interactions with our customer support team. Oh, interesting. Have you shared those findings with our support team yet? Yes, I just presented my findings to them last week and they're already rolling out some targeted training to address those issues. Nice job. It always feels good to see our analysis have a tangible impact on the business. Absolutely. That's why we do what we do. Good afternoon, how may I assist you today? Hello, I am experiencing some side effects from my medication. Is there anything I can do to alleviate them? Of course, what medication are you taking? It's for my allergies. I am taking some antihistamines. All right, some common side effects of antihistamines are drowsiness and dry mouth. 
Have you experienced those? Yes, I have been feeling quite sleepy lately and my mouth has been dry. Well, there are a few measures you can take. For the sleepiness, you could try taking your medication just before bed to avoid affecting your daily routine. And for the dry mouth, try to increase your water intake and chew sugar-free gum. Those sound like good tips, thank you. Is there anything else I should know? Yes, it is important to let your doctor know about any side effects you experience, as they may need to adjust your dosage or prescribe a different medication altogether. I will definitely keep that in mind. Thank you for your help, you've been very informative and kind. You're welcome, it's always a pleasure to assist our customers. Don't hesitate to come back if you have any other questions or concerns. Hey B, have you heard about ISO 27001 change control? It's so important for businesses to implement. Yeah, I've heard of it. But I don't really understand what it entails. Can you explain it to me? Sure. It's basically a set of processes that organizations put in place to manage changes to their information security systems. Oh, I see. That definitely sounds important. But isn't it a headache to manage all those changes? It can be, but that's why ISO 27001 provides guidelines for implementing effective change control procedures. Hmm, that's good to know. I can imagine there are plenty of horror stories out there about uncontrolled changes causing big data breaches. Definitely. Speaking of which, have you ever heard of Shadow IT? No, what's that? It's when employees use unauthorized software or devices that bypass IT controls, and it's a huge security risk. Oh no, that sounds like it could cause all sorts of problems. How can organizations prevent that? Well, a good change control process would include policies around vetting new software and devices before they're allowed on the network. Got it. So what else do I need to know about change control? Well, one key aspect is having a clear chain of command for approving changes. That way, everyone knows who's responsible and accountable for each change and can ensure it's properly vetted. Yeah, that makes sense. It's like checks and balances for information security. Exactly. And another important thing is having a rollback plan in case a change causes unintended consequences. So you mean like having a backup plan in case something goes wrong? Yes, exactly. Because even with good planning, unexpected issues can happen, and having a plan to revert to a previous state can be crucial. That's really smart. It's like an insurance policy for IT changes. Absolutely. And that's just scratching the surface of what goes into a good change control process. I can see why it's so important, especially for organizations that handle sensitive data. Yep. And the good news is that implementing an effective change control process can help prevent data breaches and other security incidents before they happen. Hi there. I see you're taking photos of this beautiful Tasmanian forest. Yes, I am. This place is incredible. I couldn't agree more. Have you been to any other parts of Tasmania yet? No, this is my first time. But I'm excited to see more of this beautiful island. Well, you're in luck. Tasmania has so many incredible landscapes to capture. Have you tried taking any wildlife photos yet? Not yet, but I would love to. Do you know of any good spots? Actually, there's a nature reserve not too far from here where you can see all sorts of unique animals, like the Tasmanian devil. Wow, that sounds amazing. I'll have to check it out. What about you? Do you have a favorite spot in Tasmania for photography? Hmm, that's a tough one. I really love Cradle Mountain for its stunning views and varied landscapes. I'll have to add that to my list. Speaking of landscapes, what are your thoughts on this forest? I love it. There's so much texture and color to work with here. Have you tried experimenting with different lenses? Yes, I've been playing around with a macro lens and getting some really cool close-up shots of the leaves. That's great. Macro photography can really bring out the details in nature. Have you heard about the Bay of Fires? No, I haven't. What's that? It's a stunning stretch of coastline with bright orange rocks and crystal clear water. It's definitely worth checking out if you have the time. I'll definitely put that on my list. By the way, what camera gear do you use? I have a Canon 5D Mark IV, and I usually stick with a 24 to 70 millimeters lens for landscapes. Wow, that's a great setup. I have a Fuji X-T4 with a few different lenses, but I'm still figuring out which ones I like best. The Fuji X-T4 is a great camera, and it's awesome that you have different lenses to play with. Are there any spots in the forest that you particularly like? I really like this area by the creek. The water is so clear, and the way the light filters through the trees is magical. 
I totally agree. That's actually a popular spot for landscape photographers. Have you tried using a neutral density filter to capture the movement of the water? No, I haven't, but I'll definitely give it a try. Thanks for the tip. No problem. That's what I'm here for. Oh, and speaking of photography tips, have you heard of the rule of thirds? Yes, I have. It's basically about composing your shot with the subject off-center, right? Exactly. It's a simple way to make your photos more visually interesting. And here in Tasmania, we have so many incredible landscapes to play with. I can see that. I'm so glad I came here. I'm getting some really great shots. That's fantastic. And if you ever need any more advice or suggestions, just let me know. Will do. Thanks again for your help. No problem. Keep shooting and enjoy your time in Tasmania. Hi there. What a lovely day to be out in the park. Yes, it is. The weather is just perfect. So, I'm a journalist and I'm curious about your thoughts on the current political environment. Oh, where do I even begin? It's a bit like a roller coaster, isn't it? That's an understatement. What's your take on the latest scandal? It's like watching a soap opera at this point. It's hard to keep up with all the twists and turns. I know what you mean. Do you think the public's trust in politicians is eroding? Sadly, yes. But I also believe that the public has the power to hold politicians accountable and demand transparency. That's true. Speaking of power, do you think there should be term limits for politicians? Absolutely. It's important to give others the opportunity to bring fresh ideas and perspectives to the table. Agreed. So, to shift gears a bit, what do you think is the best solution to address income inequality? Education and access to resources. We need to empower individuals to make changes in their own lives. I couldn't agree more. Well, it's been great chatting with you. Likewise. Enjoy the rest of your day. Good morning. Welcome to our hotel in Osaka. How can we assist you today? Hi there. We are here to make sure you have a great stay. What brings you to Osaka? I'm here for business, but I also have some leisure time to explore the city. Wonderful. Our concierge team can recommend some great local attractions and restaurants for you. That would be fantastic. I've heard the food here is amazing. Yes, Osaka is known for its delicious cuisine. Have you tried Okonomiyaki yet? It's a must try. No, I haven't. But it sounds interesting. Can you tell me more about it? Okonomiyaki is a savory pancake filled with vegetables, meat, and seafood. You cook it right at the table and top it with a special sauce. Trust me, you won't regret it. That does sound delicious. I'll definitely have to try it. Is there anything else you recommend? You should also check out the Osaka Castle and Dotenbori Street for shopping and entertainment. Our hotel provides shuttle services to these locations, so it's very convenient. Great, thank you for the recommendations. This will definitely make my stay here memorable. We're happy to assist in any way we can. Let us know if you need anything else. Hi there, how's it going? Pretty good, just working on some code. How about you? Just started the ISO 27001 audit for the company. Should be interesting. Oh, wow. Yeah, that sounds like a big project. Yeah, it can be challenging, but it's important to ensure the security of our company's information. Definitely. So, what kind of things will you be looking for in the audit? Well, a lot of it is making sure that our policies and procedures are being followed and all the necessary controls are in place. That makes sense. Yeah, and of course, I'll be checking to make sure our system is secure from potential cyber threats. Always important. Well, I'm here to help if you need any support with the technical side of things. Thanks, B. Appreciate it. And maybe after the audit, we can grab a drink and celebrate passing with flying colors. Sounds like a great plan to me. Let's do it. Hi, I'm the pastry chef here. Nice to meet you. Hi there, I'm the local confectionery merchant. I've seen your beautiful desserts from afar and I couldn't resist coming over to say hello. Thank you. I'm glad you like them. Have you tried one yet? Not yet, but they look too good to resist. What's your specialty? Our signature dessert is the lavender macaron. It's a delicate balance of sweetness and floral notes. You should definitely try it. That sounds lovely. And what about you? What do you specialize in? We also have a selection of local honey-based desserts. From honey cakes to honeycomb brittle, we have a variety of choices for honey lovers. That's amazing. 
I happen to be a huge fan of honey. Can I try one? Of course. Here, have a bite of our honey cake. It's soft, moist, and has a subtle sweetness that comes from the honey we use. MMM, this is delicious. You really know how to make the most out of local ingredients. Thank you. I always try to showcase the best of what the region has to offer. And your confectionery? I work with candied fruits and nuts. My specialty is the fig and almond nougat. It's packed with crunchy nuts and the sweetest dried figs. Want to have a taste? Yes, please. Hands over a small bite of nougat. Choose and savors, this is delicious. It's the perfect balance of sweet and nutty. I can see why it's your specialty. Thank you. I work hard to source the best ingredients for my products. I believe that quality is key. I couldn't agree more. It's important to use the best ingredients to make the best desserts. Absolutely. Say, would you like to exchange some samples? I would love to take a piece of your lavender macaron to try later. That's a great idea. And I would love to try one of your candied fruits. Deal. They both exchanged some samples. This was a great idea. I love trying new things, and your nougat is definitely something I will be coming back for. Same here. And your macarons are so beautiful, it's like eating a piece of art. That's so kind of you to say. I'm glad we can appreciate each other's craft and enjoy some delicious desserts together. Me too. It's been a pleasure meeting you and sharing our love for sweet treats. Likewise. Stop by any time, I would love to chat again and swap stories about our sweet adventures. I definitely will. Thanks for the offer and take care. Hi there. Are you excited for your first dive in the Great Barrier Reef? Yes, I am. I've always dreamed of exploring the colorful underwater world. Well, you're in for a treat. The reef is bursting with life. That's amazing. What kind of creatures can we expect to see? Oh, the list is endless. From curious Nemo fish to graceful sea turtles and even reef sharks. Wow, I hope I get to see them all. Don't worry, we'll make sure you get the best experience. Have you dived before? No, this is my first time. No worries, I'm here to guide you every step of the way. Safety is our top priority. That's reassuring. Okay, let's suit up and head underwater. Just remember to breathe normally and equalize your ears. Okay, got it. Wow, the water is so clear. Yup, the visibility is fantastic today. Let's start by practicing some basic skills before we explore further. Sure, I'm ready. Great job. Now, let's swim towards that coral formation. Keep your eyes peeled for any unique creatures. Whoa, look at that giant clam. It's bigger than me. Haha, <laughs> those clams can get quite massive. But be careful not to touch it, some species can be dangerous. Good to know. Hey, is that a school of colorful fish over there? Yes, those are Sergeant Major fish. They're quite friendly and curious, so they might even swim close to check you out. This is amazing, I feel like I'm in a whole new world. That's the beauty of diving, it's a completely different world down here. But unfortunately, our time is up. Let's head back to the boat. Ah, uh, already? I want to stay longer. Don't worry, you can always come back for more dives. Plus, the Great Barrier Reef is always here to welcome you back. Thank you so much for this amazing experience. You're the best dad ever. Laughs, it was my pleasure. I love sharing the magic of the reef with others. Hi there. How are you doing? Hey. I'm doing great, thanks for asking. So, what brings you here today? I'm a baker, and I heard that you're the go-to person for some quality coffee beans in this town. You heard right. We've got some of the best coffee beans in town, carefully selected from different parts of the world. That's great news. I need some beans for a special dessert I'm creating for a beach party. I want to infuse some coffee flavors into it. Sounds like a great idea. What type of coffee are you looking for? I was thinking of a medium roast to balance the sweetness in my dessert. What do you recommend? Well, I would recommend trying our Colombian or Costa Rican coffee. They both have a smooth and nutty flavor that would complement your sweet dessert. Okay, I'll definitely try the Colombian beans. How should I store them to maintain the freshness till I get to the party? It's recommended that you store them in a cool, dry place away from sunlight. Also, make sure to grind them just before you use them in your recipe. Alright, thanks for the tip. I'll keep that in mind. No problem. While you're here, would you like to try a cup of our fresh brew? Sure, why not? Can you recommend me something? 
How about a cappuccino? It's one of our customers' favorites. That sounds great. Do you make it with latte art? Absolutely. Our barista is a pro at latte art. Amazing. Your coffee tastes delicious, and the latte art looks like a masterpiece. Thank you. Glad you like it. We take pride in our coffee quality and service. It definitely shows. I'll be sure to recommend your coffee to my friends and colleagues. That'll be great. We appreciate your support. Come back again soon. Hey B, how was your weekend? It was great. I went to a music festival and saw some amazing live performances. How about you? I spent most of my weekend working on the script for our upcoming movie. It's coming along nicely, but I definitely need a break from staring at my computer screen. I hear you. Sometimes I feel like I'm in makeup for hours on end during filming. It can be exhausting. Speaking of filming, have you seen the latest dailies? I think we're really onto something with this movie. Definitely. I'm really excited to see how it all comes together when we wrap. So, have you heard about the catering options for today's shoot? I heard we're getting gourmet sandwiches. Yes. And I also heard they're bringing in some delicious vegan options, too. It's great to see more variety on set. Absolutely. And speaking of food, did you hear about that new restaurant in town? It's supposed to be amazing. Oh, I think I know the one. They have a signature dish that's supposed to be a game changer. The one with the truffle oil? Yeah, I've been dying to try it. We should definitely check it out sometime. Maybe after shooting wraps up, we can all grab dinner together. That sounds like a great idea. It'll be nice to unwind and hang out with the cast and crew outside of work. Totally agree. We're all working so hard on this movie, it's nice to have some downtime together. And who knows, maybe we'll come up with some new, brilliant ideas for the film over dinner. Never know, it's always when you least expect it. Okay, let's get ready for this next scene, what's on the agenda? We're filming the climax of the movie today, so it's going to be intense. But I have faith in us. Let's go make some movie magic. Hey there. I'm A, the database administrator for this research institution. Nice to meet you, B. Same to you, A. I'm B, the system engineer for the same institution. How's everything going? Pretty good, but I've been noticing that our data processing times have been a bit slow lately. Do you have any ideas on how we can optimize it? Sure thing, A. I've been doing a bit of research and I've found some ways to speed up the process. Have you ever heard of parallel processing? Yeah, I've heard of it, but don't know much about it. Care to explain? Basically, we can divide up the data into smaller chunks and process them all at the same time. This will help us get the job done quicker. That sounds awesome, B. But won't that put a huge strain on our hardware? Good point, A. It could potentially use up a lot of resources. That's why we should also consider adding more memory and processing power to our machines. Hmm, that sounds like it could get expensive. Do you think it's worth the investment? Absolutely, A. Faster processing times mean we can get more research done in a shorter amount of time. Plus, the cost of upgrading our hardware will ultimately be outweighed by the benefits. Okay, I trust your judgment on this. What about security concerns, though? We have a lot of sensitive data that we need to protect. You're absolutely right, eh? That's why we also need to make sure our security measures are up to PAR. We can implement encryption and access controls to safeguard our valuable data. Great idea, B. It's important that we don't compromise on security. How long do you think it would take to implement all these changes? Well, it depends on how complex the upgrades are. But with good planning and collaboration, we should be able to get everything up and running within a few months. Awesome. Thank you so much for your help, B. I'm already excited about the possibilities. No problem, A. I'm excited too. Let's work together and create something amazing. Hey B, have you heard about the new software testing engineer in our team? Yeah. I heard he's really good at finding bugs in the system. That's right. He's become the hero of our IT department, detecting all those defects and reducing quality problems. As a quality assurance specialist, I understand how essential his work is. But do you think it's all about detecting the errors? Absolutely not. There's a lot more to it. It's all about minimizing the defects and making sure the software runs smoothly. Exactly. And to do that, it's crucial that we create clear test cases, verify that the software runs efficiently with different system configurations, and collaborate to compile and analyze the results. Well, I think we definitely have the right team in place to ensure that we deliver robust software solutions. For sure. 
I also think it's crucial that we celebrate our milestones and achievements, like resolving a stubborn defect that we could never put our fingers on. Definitely. We should appreciate ourselves and the work we do. So, how about drinks after work to celebrate our recent project release? Sounds great. Let's cheers to our recent success and hope for many more in the future. Hey there, how's it going? Not too bad, thanks. So, you're the software engineer we're bringing onto this project, right? Yeah, that's me. I'm excited to get started. What's the scoop? Well, as you know, we're looking to create an app that merges online and offline retail experiences. Our customers should be able to seamlessly switch between the two. Got it. Sounds cool. What's your current infrastructure like? Honestly, pretty sparse. We've got some outdated legacy systems that need updating. Ah, uh, that's to be expected. What do you think? Should we build this on-premises or in the cloud? Definitely cloud-based. We need to be able to scale rapidly and stay up with the latest technology. Excellent. I'm thinking we use Angular for the front end and Node.js for the back end. Does that sound good? Yeah, those are both great choices. What about security? We need to make sure our customers' data is well protected. Of course. We'll use JSON web tokens for authentication and set up HTTPS connections throughout the app. Good call. I also want to make sure we're doing everything we can to enhance the customer experience. Maybe we could use machine learning to personalize each shopper's UX? Definitely. And we can use data analytics to track customer behavior and make the necessary adjustments. Exactly. We're also expecting some heavy traffic, so we need to make sure this app can handle it. It's no problem. I'll make sure the code is optimized, and we'll set up a load balancer to distribute traffic evenly. Excellent. Any other suggestions? Let's create some engaging animations and design a user-friendly interface to make sure the whole experience is enjoyable. I couldn't agree more. We want this app to be as fun to use as possible. Thanks for your work on this project. It's going to be amazing. Good morning. How can I assist you today? Hi. I'm looking to apply for a loan to start my own business. Great. Do you have any idea of how much you need to borrow? I'm thinking around $50,000. Do you have any suggestion? Sure. We have a few different loan options that might work for you. Have you considered taking out a secured loan? What's that? It's a loan that's secured against an asset, like a car or a house. That way, if you're unable to make the payments, we can take possession of that asset. That sounds like a risky deal. It's actually a great way to get more favorable interest rates on your loan. Plus, you can use that time to increase your credit score to get an unsecured loan later. Hmm, that sounds interesting. How do I get started? We'll need to look at your financial records and run a credit check. But, it's nothing to worry about. We'll just need you to bring in some paperwork, like your tax records and proof of employment. Okay, that sounds doable. Do you have any coffee? Yes, we do. Let me get you a cup while we go over the paperwork. Thanks, you're a great assistant. My pleasure, I'm always happy to help. Hey B, have you ever tried chimichanga before? No, I haven't. What is it? It's a deep-fried burrito from Mexican cuisine. It's super yummy. Hmm, sounds interesting. What's inside it? Usually, it consists of meat, beans, cheese, and salsa, but you can put anything you want. That sounds great. I need to try it. Definitely. It's like a handheld party in your mouth. Haha, ha, that's a cool way to describe it. Where can we find it? There's a Mexican restaurant nearby that has excellent chimichangas. I'm sure you'll love it. Let's go there for lunch then. I'm excited to try it out. Oh, yes, we should definitely go. My mouth is already watering. Same here. Now I am craving chimichanga. Don't worry. You'll get your fix soon. Chimichanga is the ultimate comfort food. I can't wait for some cheesy, meaty goodness wrapped in a crispy shell. We can top it off with some guacamole and sour cream, enhancing the flavors. That will be the perfect lunch. Let's go and satisfy our chimichanga craving. Agreed. Let's hurry before we see an entire rainbow of flavors when we close our eyes. Haha, uh, I know what you mean. Let's go. Hi B, what are you making? Hi mom, I'm making some cupcakes. Do you want to help me decorate them? Of course, I love decorating cupcakes. What color frosting are you using? I'm using pink frosting and I have these cute little heart sprinkles to put on top. Oh, those look adorable. 
How about we add some blue and yellow sugar pearls to make them extra colorful? That's a great idea, Mom. Should we also use some chocolate chips to give them some texture? Yes, I think that would be perfect. I love a little crunch in my cupcakes. Me too. Hey mom, do you remember the first time we made cupcakes together? Of course, how can I forget? You were so little and kept sneaking bites of the batter. Haha, -ha, yeah I remember that. You had to keep telling me to stop so we could actually have enough batter to bake. Good times. Hey, do you want to try making some banana bread next time? Yes, I've been wanting to make that for a while. We can add some walnuts and cinnamon to make it even better. Sounds like a plan. Okay, these cupcakes look amazing. Let's try one. MMM, these are delicious. You were right, the chocolate chips add a great crunch. I'm glad you like them. Maybe we should open up our own cupcake bakery one day. Ha uh, who knows? Maybe we'll become the next Martha Stewart and build a baking empire. Anything can happen. But for now, let's just enjoy our cupcakes together. Hey, B. Have you noticed that our software has been having a lot of bugs lately? Yeah, I have. We need to find a way to improve the software's quality. Do you think we should overhaul our development process? That might help, but it could also cause delays. We need to find a balance. I agree. What do you think about introducing more automated testing? That's a good idea. It would speed up the testing process and catch more bugs. Exactly. We could also hire more quality assurance specialists to help with the testing. Agreed. But we should also focus on improving the skills of our existing team members. Right. Maybe we could set up regular training sessions for the team. That's a great idea. We need to keep up with the latest development and testing techniques. Speaking of which, have you heard about behavior-driven development? No, what's that? It's a development process that involves collaboration between developers, testers, and business stakeholders to define the product requirements and features. Interesting. How does it work? Basically, the stakeholders write scenarios in plain English that describe how the software should behave. The developers and testers then use those scenarios to guide their work. That sounds like a great way to ensure that everyone is on the same page. Exactly. And it could also help us catch bugs earlier in the development process. I think we should definitely consider implementing that process. Agreed. Let's schedule a meeting to discuss it further and see how we can integrate it into our existing process. Sounds like a plan. Let's get to work. Hi B, how's it going? Good, A. Hey. How about you? I'm doing well, thanks. So, what's on the agenda today? We need to discuss your upcoming performance schedule. Great, let's get started. What do we have lined up so far? Well, you're set to perform at a music festival next month. Awesome. Which festival is it? It's the Summer Sound Festival in the park. That sounds like a great venue. What time is my set? You'll be on at 5 p.m., just before the headliner. Perfect. Have we decided on the set list? Not yet. What songs do you feel like playing? I was thinking of starting with my latest single, then mixing in some of my classic hits. That sounds like a good plan. We'll work out the details and confirm with the festival organizers. Sounds great. Anything else? Yes, we have a TV appearance scheduled for next week. Oh, cool. Which show is it for? It's for the morning news program on Channel 7. Nice. What do they want me to perform? They asked for an acoustic rendition of your latest single. Got it. I can do that. Is there anything else they need from me? They asked if you could be there for the live interview segment too. Sure, no problem. What time do I need to be there? You'll need to be at the studio by 8 a.m. Okay, I'll make sure to set my alarm. All right, we'll finalize the details and send you the schedule soon. Thanks, B. Can't wait for these upcoming gigs. Of course, A. It's great to see you so excited about them. Hey B, nice to meet you. I'm a software engineer, and I heard you are a database administrator. Yes, that's correct. So what brings you to our advertising agency? We've been receiving feedback from our users that they want a more personalized experience on our platform. How can we leverage our user data to provide them with better recommendations? Well, we can start by categorizing users based on their interests, location, age, and other similar data points. Okay, that makes sense. But what about their privacy? How do we ensure that their information is safe? 
That's an excellent question. We can comply with GDPR and other similar privacy guidelines, and we can also use encryption to safeguard the data. Great. How about using machine learning algorithms to predict user preferences based on their previous searches and purchases? Yes, that's a fantastic idea. We can also run several A-B tests to see which algorithms work best. That sounds like a plan. We also need to be transparent with our users about how their data is being used. Absolutely. We can inform them about our data policies and give them the option to opt out if they don't want their data to be used. That's brilliant. Once we have all this data, we can use it to inform our advertising strategy effectively. Yes, and that will help increase our conversion rates and create a better user experience. Thanks for the chat, B. I look forward to working with you on this project. My pleasure, A. Let's make this happen. Hey, how's it going, B? Not bad, A. Just a little nervous for this meeting with the accountant. No need to be nervous. Our accountant is really friendly and knows her stuff. That's reassuring. I just hope my financial report doesn't look too messy. Haha, <laughs> don't worry. She's seen worse. Plus, she's here to help you tidy things up. Good point. Hey, on a completely unrelated note, have you seen the latest episode of that show we're both obsessed with? Yes. It was so good. Can't wait to see what happens next. Right? It's all I've been thinking about lately. Same here. But we should focus on the task at hand. Our accountant will be here any minute. You're right. I just get so easily distracted by our shared interests. Trust me, I know the feeling. But let's put our fandom aside and show our accountant some professional respect. Agreed. I'll be on my best behavior. And I'll try not to reference any obscure pop culture references during the meeting. Haha, <laughs> thanks. I appreciate it. All right, looks like she's here. Let's knock this financial report out of the park. Let's do it. Hey, B, how's your homework going? It's going fine, Mom. Math is a bit tough, but I'm managing. That's great to hear. Do you need any help? Actually, I need your help with something. Can you explain these fractions to me again? Sure thing. Let's have a look. Ah, uh, fractions, the bane of my existence in school. Laughs, really, Mom? I thought you were a math whiz. Oh, I was all right. But fractions always had a way of tripping me up. Anyway, let's see. You divide a whole into equal parts. Yeah, I remember that part. But what if the parts aren't equal? Ah, uh, then you have something called unequal fractions. They may look different, but they can still be compared to each other. All right, that makes sense. Thanks, Mom. No problem. Anything for my favorite student. Grins, I'm your only student. Even better. Now, let's get back to work. Okay, how about you help me with this tricky algebra problem? All right, let's do this. This is like a puzzle, and I love puzzles. Smiling, I knew I could count on you. Hey there. How's it going? Hey. Not too bad. And you? I'm doing pretty well, thanks. So, I hear you're a natural language processing engineer? Yep, that's right. And I hear you're a data analyst? That's correct. I was thinking, maybe we could work together on analyzing news reports using natural language processing. That sounds like a great idea. I'm all ears. What do you have in mind? Well, I was thinking we could start by identifying the key entities mentioned in each article using named entity recognition. Interesting. And then what? Once we've got the entities, we could look for relationships between them using co-occurrence analysis. Ah, uh, I see. And that would allow us to identify trends in the news, right? Exactly. We could even map out those trends over time to see how they're evolving. Wow, that could be really powerful. Do you think we'd need any specific tools to get started? Probably. But luckily, there are a lot of great natural language processing libraries out there we could use. I was thinking we could start with Spacey. Sounds good to me. I've worked with that library before, and it's pretty robust. Great. And what about the data itself? Would we need to scrape it from news sites? It depends. There are a lot of APIs out there that give you access to news articles. But we could also scrape if we needed to. Okay, cool. Well, I think we've got a good basic plan of attack. Do you want to set up a time to start working together? Sure thing. We could start next week sometime. How's your schedule looking? Pretty open. 
How about Wednesday at 10 a.m.? Works for me. Let's plan on it. Sounds like a plan. Looking forward to it. Hey B, have you ever heard of ISO 27001 Integrity before? No, I haven't. What is it all about? It's a set of standards that deals with information security management. It ensures that confidential information is secure and not tampered with. Wow, that sounds really important. How does it work? Well, it starts with a risk assessment to identify potential threats and vulnerabilities. Then, controls are put in place to mitigate those risks and ensure the integrity of the information. Got it. So, what kind of controls are we talking about here? There are a variety of controls, including physical security measures, access controls, and even policies and procedures for information handling. So, I guess this applies to companies that deal with sensitive information, right? Exactly. Companies in finance, healthcare, and even government agencies can benefit from implementing these standards. That makes sense. Have you ever worked on an ISO 27001 project? Actually, I have. It was quite challenging, but also very rewarding. It's a great way to ensure the security of information and protect the company's reputation. I can imagine. Did you have to go through any training to prepare for the project? Definitely. It's important to understand the standards and the requirements for certification. Plus, it helps to have a good understanding of risk management and information security in general. I see. Well, thanks for filling me in on ISO 27001. It sounds like something worth looking into. No problem, B. It's always good to stay informed about information security, especially in today's digital age. Good morning, how are you feeling today? Hi, not too great to be honest. I've had a headache for days now. I'm sorry to hear that. Let's take a look and see what we can do for you. Have you taken any painkillers? Yeah, but they don't seem to be doing anything. All right, I'm going to examine your head and take your temperature. Have you been drinking enough water lately? Honestly, probably not. I've been really busy with work. Well, dehydration can cause headaches too. I recommend drinking more water and taking frequent breaks if possible. And I'll prescribe you a stronger painkiller for relief. Thank you, I appreciate it. I'm really hoping to get back to work soon. Of course. But don't push yourself too much. It's important to prioritize your health. I know, it's just hard when there's so much to do. I understand. But remember, taking care of yourself is the first step towards being productive. And who knows, maybe a little rest will help you come up with some fresh ideas for work. That's a good point. Thanks for being so reassuring, Doc. No problem, it's my pleasure. Let's get you feeling better soon. Hey there. Are you new here at the gym? Yes, I am. I just joined today. That's great. Welcome to the club. What type of workout are you looking for today? Actually, I want to focus on cardio today, especially running. Good choice. Running on a treadmill is an excellent way to do cardio. Have you ever used one before? No, I haven't. But I heard it's not difficult to use, right? No, it's not. Let me show you how to operate it. Demonstrates. Wow, it's easier than I thought. Do you have any tips on how to make my workout more effective? Sure, include some interval training. That means alternating between high and low intensity. It helps to burn more calories. Thanks for the advice. By the way, do you have any favorite music you like to listen to while working out? I love hip-hop and pop music. What about you? I like rock music. It's great for keeping me energized. Awesome. I'll adjust the music for you. Let's rock this workout together. Yeah, let's do it. By the way, do you know of any healthy eating options around here? Absolutely. We have a cafe nearby that serves healthy smoothies and protein bowls. That sounds perfect. I'll make sure to check it out. Definitely do so. It's essential to fuel up properly after a workout. Thanks for your help. You're such a great coach. No worries. Happy to help. Keep up the good work. Hey, have you ever been to Cairns in Australia? No, I haven't. Why do you ask? I'm thinking of planning a trip there, but I'm curious about the weather and seasonal features. Do you know anything about it? Well, I do know that Cairns is in the tropics, so the weather is pretty warm all year round. But there are some seasonal differences to keep in mind. Oh, interesting. What kind of differences are we talking about? 
From about May to October, it's considered the dry season, which means you'll get less rainfall and more sunshine. It's a good time for outdoor activities like hiking and snorkeling. That sounds great. But what about the other months? From about November to April, it's the wet season. You can expect more rain and humidity, but it's also a good time to see the rainforests and the waterfalls in full flow. Hmm, I don't know if I'm a fan of rain, but that could be worth it. What else should I know about Cairns? Well, it's known for its access to the Great Barrier Reef, so if you're into scuba diving or snorkeling, it's a must-visit. But there are also plenty of other outdoor activities like bungee jumping, rafting, and ziplining. Whoa, that all sounds pretty intense. Is there anything a little more laid-back to do? Definitely. Cairns has some beautiful beaches and parks, so you can always just relax and soak up the sun. Plus, there are a lot of cute cafes and restaurants to check out. Awesome, I'm sold. When would you recommend I go? Well, it really depends on what kind of experience you're looking for. If you want to avoid rain and humidity, go during the dry season. But if you want to see the rainforests in full bloom, go in the wet season. It's all up to personal preference. Thanks for all the info, I definitely have some decisions to make. And when I get back, I'll have to tell you all about my adventures in Cairns. Dad, let's play some baseball. Sure, son. I hope I'm not too rusty. Don't worry, Dad. We can warm up first. Great idea. Let me grab my mitt. I'm going to pitch first, okay? Sounds good. Let's see that arm. Here comes the wind-up and the pitch. Home run. You must have been practicing. Thanks, but you get to bat now. All right, let's see if I can hit one out of the park. Chuckles, Dad, we're in a park. Laughs, good one, son. Okay, let's do this. Nice hit, Dad. You're a natural. Thanks, but I think I need some more practice. Don't worry, we can play every weekend. That sounds like a plan, Keto. But for now, let's grab some ice cream. Yes, please. You're the best, Dad. Smiling, no, you're the best, son. Have you ever heard of Ballot? Ballot? No, what's that? It's a delicacy in the Philippines. It's basically a boiled fertilized duck egg. Uh, that sounds interesting. Yeah, it can be a bit intimidating for some people because you can see the duck embryo inside the egg. EW, I don't know if I could handle that. You know what though, it's actually pretty tasty. The yolk is really rich and flavorful, and the egg white has a nice texture to it. Huh, I guess I'd be willing to give it a try. Where can I find it? There are some Filipino restaurants that serve it, or you might be able to find it at an Asian grocery store. It's definitely worth trying at least once. All right, I'm up for the challenge. Do people usually eat it as a meal or a snack? It's more of a snack or street food. You can eat it on its own, or sometimes people put salt or vinegar on it for a little extra flavor. Sounds like an interesting culinary adventure. I'm excited to give it a try. Just make sure you have an open mind and an empty stomach. Hey, B. Great to finally meet you. You look stunning as always. Thank you, A. I'm excited to be working with you today. So, what do you think of our shoot location today? This Miami Beach backdrop is perfect for our fashion-themed shoot. I love it. The sun and the waves are just so inviting. It might be hard to focus with all the distractions around, though. Haha, <laughs> try to stay focused for me, B. We've got some amazing outfits I want to capture on camera. No problem, A. I'm ready to work. That's the spirit. Let's start with some shots against the colorful lifeguard towers. The contrast will make the photos pop. Sounds like a plan. Should I do some playful poses or more serious ones? Mix it up a bit. Serious, playful, and a bit of both. We want to showcase your versatility as a model. Got it. What about our next location? Any ideas? How about we take some shots on the pier, with the ocean as our backdrop? Perfect. Can't wait to see how those turn out. Me too. And last, but not least, we'll end our shoot with some photos in front of those Art Deco buildings. I have a feeling those will turn out amazing. I'm excited to see the final shots too, A, thanks for an unforgettable shoot. The pleasure is all mine, B, hope we can work together again soon. Enjoy the rest of your stay in Miami. Hey, have you heard about cloud computing? Yeah, I have. It's the future of technology, isn't it? Exactly. It's so convenient and efficient. I think everyone should take advantage of it. I totally agree. But isn't it a bit complicated to set up? 
Not really, there are a lot of online tutorials and resources available to guide you through the process. That's good to know. But is it safe to store sensitive information on the cloud? Absolutely. In fact, cloud providers have advanced security features in place to protect your data. Wow, that's impressive. I'm definitely considering using cloud computing now. You should. It's not only beneficial for personal use, but businesses as well. It can save a lot of time and money. Yeah, I've heard that companies can scale their operations easily with cloud computing. Yes, and it's also environmentally friendly since it reduces the need for physical servers. That's great news. I think cloud computing is definitely the way to go for the future. Agreed. Now, I just need to convince my boss to let us switch to cloud-based software. Good luck with that. But with all the benefits, it shouldn't be too hard to convince him. I hope so. Thanks for the chat. It's always nice to geek out about technology with someone. Anytime, my friend. It's always fun to learn something new from a fellow tech enthusiast. Good morning, everyone. I hope you all had a great weekend. Hey boss, I actually had a pretty interesting weekend. I went camping for the first time. Really? How was it? It was tough at first, but it turned out to be a lot of fun. I did a lot of hiking and exploring. That sounds like a great adventure. Did you bring a tent or stay in a cabin? I brought a tent, but to be honest, I didn't really know how to set it up properly. It took me a while. Well, we all have to start somewhere. How about the meeting? Do we have everything we need for the presentation? Yes, I've got everything ready. And by the way, did you see the latest memo from HR? No, I haven't had a chance. What's going on? They're looking for volunteers for the company's charity event next month. That's wonderful news. Count me in, and let's get the whole team involved. It'll be a great opportunity to give back to the community. Agreed. I think volunteering is a great way to bond with our colleagues, too. Well said. It's always good to have a happy and motivated team. All right, let's get started. Time is of the essence. Hi there, I'm a photographer and I'm interested in capturing the beauty of Kyoto's Arashiyama. Can you guide me through the area? Of course. Arashiyama is a wonderful place to shoot photos. Did you know that Arashiyama means Storm Mountain in English? That's really interesting. What's the history behind it? Legend has it that a storm god lived in the mountains and calmed storms upon request. That's why the mountains were named after him. That's a great story. I had no idea. What are some of the must-see spots to take photos of around here? The Bamboo Forest is a popular spot, as are the Togetsukiyo Bridge and the Tenryuji Temple. The views from the mountains are also breathtaking. Wow, there are so many gorgeous spots to choose from. Do you have any tips for getting the perfect shot? Timing is key. Sunrise and sunset are the best times to take photos. Also, avoid weekends when it gets too crowded. That makes sense. Thank you for the advice. What's your favorite thing about Kyoto's Arashiyama? I love how serene and peaceful it is here. You can truly escape the chaos of the city and immerse yourself in nature. I completely agree. It's so calming out here. Thanks for showing me around and teaching me about the history and culture of Arashiyama. It's been a pleasure. No problem at all. Let me know if you need any more recommendations or guidance. Have fun photographing. Hey, have you had a chance to look at the system performance analysis results? Yep, I dove into them yesterday. It's pretty clear that there are some major bottlenecks. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Did you find any trends or patterns? Definitely. It looks like our data access times are way too slow, which is affecting overall response times. Okay, that makes sense. Do you think we need to make some hardware upgrades, or can we work on this issue in software? It might be a bit of both. Hardware upgrades are never a bad idea, but there are some simple software tweaks that could help too. Cool. Have you considered looking at how we're handling data storage? Absolutely. I actually think that could be a big part of the problem. Our database is so overloaded that it's bogging everything else down. Wow, I had no idea it was that bad. So what would be your first steps for tackling this issue? I'd say let's start by re-architecting the database. We could split up our data into smaller chunks and use some intelligent caching techniques to speed things up. Okay, that sounds like a good plan. Do you think we should bring in any external help to get this done faster? Actually, I think we're both more than capable of handling this. We just have to put our heads together and get to work. I like your can-do attitude. Let's do this. Definitely. 
I'm excited to see the performance improvements we'll make once we implement these changes. Agreed. Speaking of that, what do you think a realistic time frame would be for making these changes? I'd say we could get most of it done in two to three weeks, but some of the more complex database work might take a bit longer. Got it. Let's aim for three weeks then, and we can reevaluate if needed. Thanks for your insights on this. I feel much better about tackling this issue now. No problem. I'm always happy to help out. Good morning. Welcome to the beautiful Avalon Peninsula. My name is Tom, and I will be your guide for today's tour. How are you feeling this morning, Miss Sarah? I'm feeling great, Tom. I'm very excited to explore the peninsula with you today. Fantastic. Our first stop is the stunning Crooked Lake. This lake is famous for its crystal clear water and abundant fish. Have you ever gone fishing before? Actually, I haven't. Fishing has always seemed like a complicated activity to me. No worries, Miss Sarah. We have professional guides who can teach you the basics of fishing. Trust me, it's not that hard. That sounds like a lot of fun, Tom. I'm looking forward to it. Great. Then let's get going. On our way to Crooked Lake, we'll stop at the delicious Sunset Diner for breakfast. Are you hungry? Yes, please. I'm starving after the flight. All right then. I recommend trying their famous blueberry pancakes. They are a local specialty. Yum. That sounds amazing. Can't wait to try them. After we finish breakfast, we'll head to Crooked Lake for some fishing. If we're lucky, we might catch some bass or trout. That sounds like a lot of fun. Do you think I'll be able to catch any fish? Of course. Just remember to be patient and listen to our guide. Who knows, you might even catch the biggest fish of the day. That would be so cool. I can't wait to tell my friends back home about it. Definitely. Avalon Peninsula has a lot of adventures in store for you. Hope you enjoy your stay here, Miss Sarah. Thank you so much, Tom. I'm sure I will. Hi, I'm a geologist. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm an adventurer. Nice to meet you too. So, what brings you to this area? I was exploring the nearby mountain range and stumbled upon this area with interesting rock formations. Yes, this area is known for its unique geological features. Let me show you around. That would be great, thanks. Over there is a layer of sandstone that was formed millions of years ago by ancient rivers. Wow, it's amazing how nature can create such beautiful patterns. Yes, and over here we have a fault line where the Earth's crust has shifted. It looks like the rocks are almost shivering. Ha, huh, yes, the movement can cause some pretty interesting shapes. And look up there, that's a volcanic rock formation. That's incredible. It looks like black candy floss. Laughs, yes, it does. Overall, this area is a treasure trove of geological wonders. I'm glad you're enjoying it. I'm more than enjoying it. This is beyond my wildest dreams. Smiling, I'm happy to have shared this experience with you. Shall we continue exploring? Absolutely. It's like we're on a treasure hunt, but instead of gold, we're discovering the secrets of the earth. Hi there. I'm a pastry chef, and I'll be making some desserts. What kind of coffee would you recommend to pair with them? Hi. I'm a barista, nice to meet you. Well, it depends on what kind of dessert you're making. Ah, uh, I see. I'll be making a chocolate ganache tart and a strawberry shortcake. For the chocolate tart, I recommend our dark roast coffee. It's bold and rich, just like the chocolate. And for the strawberry shortcake, our medium roast coffee would be perfect. It has a nice fruity undertone that complements the strawberries. That sounds perfect. Thank you for the recommendations. Do you have any favorite desserts? Hmm, that's a tough one. I'm a big fan of tiramisu, but I also love anything with caramel. Oh, I have a great recipe for a salted caramel macaron. Would you like to try it? Absolutely. I'd love to. And maybe we can do a coffee pairing with it too. Sounds like a plan. Speaking of coffee, what's your favorite coffee-making method? I love using the pour-over method. It's simple, but it brings out the best flavors in the coffee. Nice. My favorite method is the French press. It's a classic, and it makes a really flavorful cup of coffee. Oh, I haven't had French press coffee in a while. Maybe I'll have to try it again soon. Definitely. And if you ever need any pastry recommendations, let me know. Will do. Thanks for your help today, and I look forward to our future collaborations. Same here. It's great to find someone who's passionate about coffee and desserts like I am. Agreed. 
Have a good day, and happy baking. You too, and happy brewing. Hey B, how's it going? Good, good. How about you? Can't complain. So, I hear we're working on a smart traffic management system? Yeah, that's right. The idea is to relieve congestion and make people's lives easier. Ah, uh, gotcha. So, what are your thoughts on how we should build this out? Well, I was thinking we could use AI to analyze traffic patterns and adjust traffic lights in real time. Interesting. And what about incorporating GPS signals to help guide drivers to the shortest routes? That's a great idea. And with machine learning, we could even predict traffic jams before they happen. Nice. And what if we add sensors to the roads to gather data on traffic flow and adjust traffic lights accordingly? Absolutely. We could even integrate weather data to help people avoid accidents caused by rain or snow. Now we're cooking with gas. How about pedestrian crossings? We could install smart crosswalks that only light up when there are people waiting to cross. That's a great idea. And we could also create an app that lets people know how long it will take to get from point A to point B. Perfect. And with the app, we could allow for carpooling and provide incentives for people to carpool in order to reduce congestion. I love it. And what about emergency vehicles? We could designate certain routes for emergency vehicles to take to ensure they arrive at their destination quickly and safely. Brilliant. And with all these features combined, we could create a truly smart traffic management system. Definitely. It's exciting to imagine how much relief this could bring to our cities. Agreed. I can't wait to start building this out. Me too. Let's collaborate and make it happen. Hi there. How's it going? Not too bad, thanks. How about yourself? I'm doing well, thanks. I wanted to ask you something, have you thought about any other requirements for the new project? Funny you should ask, I was actually just brainstorming some ideas. I think we need to make sure we have a good communication plan in place. I totally agree. How about we also make sure we set clear expectations for each team member's responsibilities? That's a great idea. And we should add a section for contingency planning, just in case something unexpected happens. Yes, that's definitely important. I think we should also consider any potential obstacles that may arise and have a plan in place to handle them. Absolutely. And what about creating a timeline for the project? That way, we can make sure we're on track and not falling behind schedule. Perfect. I like the sound of that. Another thing to consider is assessing the risks involved and coming up with strategies to minimize them. Great point. And how about including a section on how to measure success so we can make sure the project is meeting its objectives? Yes, that's crucial. And let's not forget to make sure that we have the necessary resources and budget to complete the project on time. Good thinking. And maybe we can also have a plan for how we'll handle any issues that may arise between team members during the project. Yes, a conflict resolution plan would be a good idea. And, how about setting up regular check-ins to discuss progress and identify any areas for improvement? Excellent suggestion. I think we're really nailing down some essential requirements here. Agreed. It's important that we consider all possible scenarios and come up with a comprehensive plan. Anything else you can think of? Hmm, I think that covers everything. This is going to be one well-planned and successful project. Definitely. Thanks for discussing this with me. I feel more confident about our plan now. No problem. Always happy to chat about project requirements with a fellow TOEIC Gold Level speaker. Hey B, have you ever tried falafel before? No, I haven't. What's it like? It's a Middle Eastern dish made from chickpeas, herbs, and spices, formed into little balls or patties and fried till crispy. Hmm, that sounds interesting. Is it spicy? Not necessarily, but you can spice it up if you like. It's usually served with pita bread, veggies, and tahini sauce. Oh, I love Mediterranean food. I should definitely try it out sometime. Definitely. It's a great vegetarian option too. Speaking of vegetarian options, have you ever had a falafel burger? Yes, it's basically falafel patty on a burger bun with all the fixings. It's a great alternative to regular burgers. Sounds delicious. I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. Same here. Let's grab some falafel for lunch today. Sounds like a plan. But where can we find good falafel around here? There's this great Mediterranean restaurant just a few blocks away. They have the best falafel in town. Awesome. Let's head there now. I can't wait to try it out. All right, let's go get our falafel fix.
Hey B, have you heard of ISO 27001 Management? Yeah, I have actually. It's a set of guidelines for managing information security risks, right? You got it. Have you worked with it before? Not directly, but I've worked on projects that required compliance with those guidelines. Interesting. Do you know how to implement it? I have a general idea, but I think it would require some specialized knowledge and expertise. Yeah, that makes sense. I heard that companies that implement ISO 27001 see some major benefits, like improved data protection and increased trust from customers. Definitely. It's becoming more and more important for companies to prioritize information security. It seems like it. Have you seen any companies struggle with implementing it? I have actually. It can be tough because it requires a lot of resources and commitment. I can imagine. But I bet it's worth it in the long run. Yes, absolutely. And there's always room for improvement and ongoing maintenance to keep up with evolving risks and technologies. Makes sense. Do you know of any resources or tools that could help with implementation? There are a lot of consulting firms and online resources that specialize in ISO 27001 implementation. It might be worth looking into those. That's a good point. I'll have to do some research on that. Thanks for chatting with me about this, B. No problem, A. It was nice talking to you. Hey B, are you excited for today's rehearsal? Yeah, I can't wait to see A and his band perform in the concert hall. Thanks, B. It's been a while since we performed together. I know, but I'm sure you'll all sound amazing. We sure hope so. We've been practicing every day this week. That's dedication. What songs are you rehearsing? We're doing a mix of classical and modern pieces. That sounds like a fun blend. Which one is your favorite to perform? Definitely, the modern pieces. They allow us to express ourselves more creatively. I can't wait to see your musical interpretation. Will you be playing any solos? Yes, there will be a few. But the focus is on the whole band. We're a team. I'm sure you'll all be in sync. How long have you guys been playing together? About two years now. We met during music school and started the band soon after. That's amazing. Your hard work and teamwork are truly paying off. Thanks, B. It's always great to perform with such talented musicians. I bet. So, are you nervous for tonight's performance? A little bit, but I trust in our preparation and our ability to bring joy to our audience. I'm sure you'll do just that. Good luck with rehearsal today, A. Thanks, B. See you at the concert tonight. What are you working on, B? Just hemming these pants. You know I always have to take them up because I'm short. You're definitely shorter than me, that's for sure. Thankfully I have you to help me out. Do you remember teaching me how to sew? Of course I do. I thought it was important for you to learn life skills like sewing. You never know when it will come in handy. You were right. I've saved so much money by being able to hem my own pants and fix my own clothes. Do you want some help with those pants? That would be great. I still struggle with getting the measurements right sometimes. No problem, let's take a look. Laughing, remember that time I accidentally sewed my sleeve to my skirt? Laughing, how could I forget? It took us forever to get that undone. I've definitely come a long way since then, thanks to you. You're welcome, sweetie. I just want to make sure you're prepared for anything. Well, I'm definitely prepared for any fashion emergencies now. Smiling, you certainly are. I'm proud of you for taking the time to learn. Thanks, Mom. You're the best teacher anyone could ask for. Good morning, B. Have you seen the diversity of marine life we've come across during this journey? Good morning, A. Absolutely. It's been fascinating to see so many different species in their natural habitats. Do you have a favorite so far? I'm particularly drawn to the colorful coral reefs. It's like a painting brought to life down there. I see your point. For me, it's the dolphins. They're so intelligent and playful. Agreed. Did you know that they have their own unique whistle and name each other? No way. That's amazing. Speaking of unique creatures, have you seen the anglerfish yet? Yes, they're the ones with the glowing lure on their heads, right? They're like something out of a sci-fi movie. Right. But also, have you heard about their mating habits? The male actually fuses himself with the female and becomes a permanent sperm supplier. Wow, nature never ceases to amaze me. Hey, have you seen any whales around here? Not yet, unfortunately. But I did see a pod of killer whales near Alaska once. 
They're truly awe-inspiring. That sounds incredible. I hope we can spot some on this trip too. Absolutely. We'll keep our eyes peeled. But for now, let's continue to appreciate the incredible marine diversity around us. It's truly a privilege to witness it firsthand. Couldn't agree more, eh? Let's keep exploring. Happy birthday, B. I can't believe you're already 21. Thank you, Dad. Time flies so fast. I'm glad we could celebrate here tonight. This restaurant is really fancy. I think we made the right choice for your birthday celebration. Yes, and the food looks amazing. I can't wait to try their famous steak. Speaking of food, have you decided on your birthday wish for tonight? Yes, I have. I wish for good health and happiness for everyone in our family and friends. That's a wonderful wish, B. I hope it will come true. Me too, Dad. Anyway, have you guys planned anything exciting for your upcoming vacation? Not really, but we're considering going on a cruise. How about you? Well, my friends and I are planning a trip to Japan next month. I'm so excited. Japan sounds like a fun destination. Don't forget to try their famous sushi and ramen. I won't, Dad. I'm also looking forward to visiting some of the famous temples and gardens there. That sounds amazing. I've always wanted to go to Japan too. Maybe we should plan a family trip there one day. That would be great, Dad. We can all try out the famous hot springs together. Sounds like a plan, B. Now let's enjoy our meals and celebrate your special day. Thank you, Dad. I feel so blessed to have you as my father. Good morning. How can I assist you today? Hi there. I'm a travel industry professional and I was hoping to discuss sales strategies for our new travel products. Sounds exciting. Where are your destinations and what type of products are you offering? We have a range of packages for various destinations including tropical getaways and European trips. We're offering everything from all-inclusive resort stays to cultural tours. Great. Have you considered partnering with hotels or offering promotions for repeat customers? Yes, we've definitely thought about those options. We also have a loyalty program in place for our frequent travelers. That's fantastic. What about online marketing and social media? Those are great ways to reach a wider audience. Yes, we're active on social media and we have a team specifically dedicated to digital marketing. It sounds like your team is doing a great job. Have you considered any unique promotions or packages to set yourselves apart from competitors? Actually, we have a package that includes a guided tour of a local vineyard followed by a wine and cheese tasting. It's been a hit with our customers. That's a brilliant idea. I'm sure it's popular with wine enthusiasts. Well, I hope your sales continue to soar. Have a great day. Thank you. It was great chatting with you. Hey B, have you heard of ISO 27001 encryption? Yeah, I have. It's a standard for information security management systems, right? That's right, and it's becoming a big deal in the business world. Do you have any experience with it? Not personally, but I know a bit about encryption. Do you know much about it? Yeah, I've been studying it for my job. Basically, encryption is a way to protect data by scrambling it so that only someone with the proper key can unscramble it. Oh, I see. So it's like code breaking, right? Kind of, except that it's more about making sure that only authorized people can decode the information. Have you ever used encryption software? No, I haven't. Have you? Yeah, I've used a few different programs. It can be kind of confusing at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. What kinds of programs have you used? Well, there's TrueCrypt, which is a free program that's pretty popular. And then there's PGP, which is a little more advanced and can be used for things like email encryption. Hmm, sounds like something I should look into. Do you think it's important for companies to use encryption? Definitely. With so much sensitive information being stored and transferred digitally these days, it's crucial to have strong security measures in place. Plus, it can help prevent legal liability if there's a data breach. Yeah, that makes sense. I'll have to bring that up at our next company meeting. Definitely. And if you want some help getting started with encryption, just let me know. Thanks, I appreciate it. You really know your stuff when it comes to this kind of thing. Laughs, I try. It's all part of the job. But if there's anything else you ever need help with, just let me know. Hi there. Are you ready to start the photo shoot? Absolutely. I'm excited to see what we can create in this amazing location. Great. Let's get started with some shots in front of the slot machines. 
Can you strike a pose while pretending to play? Sure thing. Poses with a giant smile on her face. Perfect. Now let's try some shots in front of the fountain outside. Can you walk towards the camera while flipping your hair? Got it. Flips hair and walks confidently. Beautiful. I'm really impressed by your modeling skills. Thank you. Working with a great photographer like you makes it easy. Speaking of easy, I want to try some more challenging shots next. How about we climb up to the rooftop for a cityscape background? Sounds thrilling. Let's do it. And finally, let's finish with some candid shots of you enjoying the Vegas nightlife. How do yo? Hi there, how can I assist you with your international exchange program? Hi, I'm interested in participating in an exchange program overseas, but I'm not sure where to start. That's great to hear. Where are you considering going? I was thinking about Japan or South Korea. Japan and South Korea are both very popular choices. What is it that draws you to those countries? I've always been interested in Japanese and Korean culture, and I want to improve my language skills while experiencing them firsthand. Excellent reasons. Have you thought about what type of exchange program you're looking for? There are short-term programs, semester-long programs, and full academic year programs. I'm not sure yet. What would you recommend? It really depends on the amount of time you have and your academic goals. Short-term programs are great for cultural immersion experiences, while longer programs allow you to fully immerse yourself in the culture and language. I see. What about the cost of the program? Cost can also vary depending on the program length and location. Make sure to budget for airfare, accommodations, food, and any other incidental expenses. But, many programs offer scholarships or financial aid to help offset costs. That's good to know. Do you have any other tips or recommendations for me? Yes, make sure to research the programs carefully, read reviews from other participants, and try to connect with alumni to hear about their experiences. And don't forget to apply early. Many programs have limited space and application deadlines. Thank you so much for your help and advice. I feel more prepared and excited to start my planning now. Glad to have been of assistance. Best of luck to you in your international exchange journey. Hey, did you hear about the new project that just came in? No, what's going on? It's a big one, and we need to be on top of our game to make it work. Sounds exciting. What's the plan? Well, we have to gather a team, and I think you'd be great for it. Really? That's awesome. What role would I play? You'd be in charge of the creative direction. But we need to come up with some fresh ideas. I'm up for the challenge. Let's brainstorm. Okay, first, we need to create a catchy tagline. How about breaking barriers with innovative solutions? Nice one. Now, we need to design a logo that represents the essence of the project. I have a few ideas in mind. Maybe we can combine them and make something unique. That's a great plan. What about the website layout? I think we should focus on simplicity with a modern touch. What do you think? I agree. We don't want to overcomplicate things. What's our timeline? We have three months to deliver our first proposal. Let's make sure we stay on track and deliver on time. Absolutely. I'm confident we can make this project a success. Hey B. Have you heard of ISO 27001 Mobile Device Management? ISO what now? Sorry A, I have no idea. It's like this big certification for keeping mobile devices secure, especially for companies. Ah, gotcha. So what do you think about it? Well, let me tell you, it's a game changer. No more worrying about losing phones, hacking, or data breaches. That sounds way too good to be true. What else do you know about it? Basically, it helps companies protect their sensitive data by controlling access to it and remotely wiping any lost or stolen devices. Nice. So how does it benefit us normal folks who aren't a part of a company? It's just as useful for individuals like us. We can secure our personal devices, avoid identity theft, and enjoy some privacy. Awesome. I'll definitely look more into it. But why does it have to have such a long, boring name, though? Huh. That's a great question, B. Maybe they thought it would sound more official that way. Well, it certainly does sound fancy. I'll make sure to name drop it in my next conversation to impress someone. Haha. <laughs> you do that, B. But seriously, let's stay safe and secure our devices with ISO 27001 MDM. You got it, A. Cheers to tech security. Hey there, B. How's the painting coming along? Hi, A. 
It's been a bit challenging, but I'm happy with how it's turning out. How about you? Oh, I'm just tidying up some of the pieces the students left behind. What's the theme of your piece? It's called Serenity. I wanted to capture the calmness of nature and the beauty of it. That sounds lovely. What kind of colors are you using to bring out that feeling? I'm mostly using blue and green shades, with a touch of orange for some contrast. Nice. I think the contrast will add an interesting layer to your work. Have you thought about the composition of the painting? Yeah, I've been trying to balance the elements out, but it's been a bit tricky. Any suggestions, eh? You could try using the rule of thirds. It's a useful technique to help with composition in paintings and photography. Thanks, eh? I'll definitely give that a try. Of course. Always happy to help. Hey, have you seen the new artworks that were brought in for the exhibit next week? No, I haven't. What kind of pieces are they? They're quite interesting, some abstract and some more traditional. I think you'd enjoy them. Sounds like a good watch. Do you think we'll be able to visit the exhibit on our lunch break? Absolutely. It'll be a great way to get some inspiration for our work. Can't wait. Thanks for telling me, A. Hey. No problem, B. Keep up the great work on your painting. Hey, B. Have you heard about ISO 27001 compliance? Yeah, I have, A. Hey. It's all about information security, right? Exactly. And do you know what's the best part? Enlighten me, A. Hey. Well, if you're certified, you can brag about having high-class security measures in place. Imagine impressing your clients with that. Wow, A. Hey. That does sound pretty impressive. But is it easy to get there? Not exactly a walk in the park, but it's doable. It just requires organization, planning, and a lot of paperwork. That doesn't sound too bad from your tone, eh? I mean, let's face it. No one enjoys paperwork. But who wouldn't want to ensure their company's security and privacy? Agreed. What's your favorite part about the compliance process? That's easy, B. The risk assessment stage. I love analyzing risks and coming up with mitigation strategies. Ah, nerdy but cool at the same time. My favorite part is probably the internal audits. It's like being a detective trying to find weaknesses in the system. It really is, B. I guess we're the information security versions of Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. Speaking of which, when we get certified, we should celebrate with our own version of the Baker Street ritual. Haha. <laughs> Count me in, as long as it involves cake. You got it, eh? Now, let's get our compliance hats on and get this show on the road. Onward, Watson. Hey, have you heard of ISO 27001 Information Security? No, tell me more about it. It's a standard that outlines best practices for managing and protecting sensitive information. That sounds like something we should be implementing in our company. Definitely. It can help us minimize risks and ensure we're in compliance with regulations. So how do we get started with implementing it? Well, we first need to conduct a risk assessment to identify potential vulnerabilities in our systems. That makes sense. What else do we need to do? We also need to develop and implement policies and procedures to manage those risks and ensure information is secure. Got it. And who should be responsible for implementing and maintaining these policies? That would be the information security team. Do we have an information security team? Um, not exactly. Maybe we'll need to hire someone. Yeah, or we could train an existing employee with the necessary skills. That's a good idea. We should also make sure everyone in the company is aware of the importance of information security. Absolutely. And we'll need to regularly review and update our policies and procedures to keep up with changing technology and threats. So it sounds like implementing ISO 27001 is an ongoing process, not just a one-time thing. Yes, that's correct. But it's worth it to protect our sensitive information and ensure the trust of our clients and customers. I agree. Let's get started on this ASAP. Yes, I am a marine biologist who specializes in studying the underwater world of marine animals. There are many challenges facing marine life, including pollution, overfishing, temperature changes, and ocean acidification. Absolutely. We can reduce plastic waste, support sustainable fishing practices, and advocate for policies that protect marine life and their ecosystems. Yes, I've been fortunate enough to encounter a variety of unique marine life, including giant manta rays, colorful coral formations, and schools of fish. It's a great way to experience the wonders of the ocean firsthand, just make sure to always respect and protect the marine environment. Likewise, 
Remember, every action we take can make a difference in protecting the ocean and its inhabitants. Hey B, how's it going today at the factory? Not bad A, eh? we're just trying to ramp up production on these new gadgets we're making. That's great to hear. As the engineer on this project, I'm curious about how we can improve the manufacturing process. Well A, eh? I'm all ears. What ideas do you have? Hmm, have you thought about using robots to help with the assembly? Of course, A. Eh? In fact, we just implemented a new robotic arm that can assemble pieces in seconds. That's amazing B. I'm so glad we're on the same wavelength. Yay, teamwork makes the dream work, right? Exactly. And I'm also thinking about incorporating some 3D printing technology to speed up the prototyping phase. That's a great idea, eh? Let's get started on that right away. Awesome, B. But before we get too carried away, can we take a break and grab a cup of coffee? Sounds good to me, eh? I could use a caffeine boost before we get back to work. Great, let's go to that coffee shop down the street. They have the best lattes. Ah, you know me too well, eh? Let's go. Hey, have you heard of ISO 27001 Intrusion Detection System, IDS? Um, not really. What's that about? Well, it's a security standard that helps prevent unauthorized access to computer systems. Ah, okay. That sounds interesting. Do you know how it works? Basically, it monitors network traffic and identifies any suspicious behavior. Oh, so like a security guard for your computer system. Exactly. And it can send alerts to the system administrator if it detects any potential threats. Wow, that sounds like a useful tool to have. Have you ever used it before? No, but I've been reading up on it. I think it's something that more companies should consider implementing. Definitely. Security is such an important aspect of any business, especially in this day and age when cyber attacks are becoming more common. Absolutely. And the great thing about IDS is that it can be customized to fit the specific needs of a company. That's good to know. I'll have to do some research on it myself. Yeah, and if you need any help with it, I'd be happy to lend a hand. Thanks, I appreciate it. Maybe we can even implement it in our own workplace. That would be a great idea. We could help keep our company's data safe and secure. Yup, and it would give us some peace of mind knowing that we have an extra layer of protection. Definitely. So, are you ready to become IDS experts? Haha, uh -huh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. But I'm definitely willing to learn more about it. Sounds good to me. We can start by looking for some online resources and maybe even attending some seminars. That's a great plan. I'm excited to learn more and become more knowledgeable in this area. Me too. It's always good to expand our skills and knowledge base. Agreed. Thanks for bringing this to my attention, hey. You're always full of good ideas. No problem, B. We've got this. Hey, B. I heard you've been working out with a personal trainer lately. Yeah, his name is A, and he's been kicking my butt. That's great to hear. So what kind of exercises have you been doing? A lot of weight training and cardio, but he's always switching it up to keep me on my toes. Ah, uh, sounds like A knows what he's doing. Definitely. Plus, he's really funny and makes the workouts enjoyable. Well, that's always a plus. What's your favorite exercise so far? I never thought I'd say this, but I actually enjoy burpees now thanks to A. Wow, that's impressive. I'm still trying to learn to like them myself. Haha, <laughs> it took me a while. How about you? Have you ever worked with a personal trainer before? Yeah, I have. It was difficult at first, but once I got into a routine, I started seeing results. That's awesome. I hope I can stick with it and see the same kind of progress. Of course, consistency is key. Just remember, the most important thing is to have fun and enjoy the process. Thanks for the advice, A. I'll keep that in mind. No problem, B. Let's hit the weights now and show them what we're made of. Good morning, I'm the tea master assigned to teach you how to pair tea with the perfect dish. Good morning. Thank you for coming. I'm excited to learn more about tea and its perfect match. Me too. I think the best way to start is with a green tea to complement a light dish like fish or sushi. Would you like to try that? Sounds perfect. How about we try it with a tuna roll? Great choice. The umami flavor of the tuna pairs well with a sencha green tea. Hmm, I taste a refreshing and slightly bitter flavor in the tea. It contrasts nicely with the savory taste of the tuna. Exactly. For a heavier dish like steak, we can try pairing it with a black tea like Darjeeling. 
I can see how the smoky flavor of the steak can match the complexity of the tea. It's like an orchestra in my mouth. Indeed. And finally, for dessert, we can try a sweet floral tea like jasmine to balance out the richness of the chocolate cake. Wow, I can't believe how much of a difference the right tea pairing can make. It's not just about the food, but the whole experience. That's right. And with these tea pairing techniques, you can offer customers a unique and memorable dining experience. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with me. I can't wait to try this out at the restaurant. My pleasure. It was a pleasure working with you. Hey there, do you know anything about databases? Yeah, I know a thing or two. Why do you ask? I'm just curious about how they work. Can you explain the concept to me? Sure, basically, a database is a collection of organized data that can be easily accessed, managed, and updated. Okay, got it. And what about the architecture of a database? The architecture of a database refers to the overall design and structure of the database system. It includes things like the data model, schema, indexing, and storage. That sounds complicated. Can you break it down further? Sure, think of it like a house. The data model is the blueprint, the schema is the layout, indexing is like the inventory, and storage is like the foundation. Ah, that makes more sense. So what's the most important thing to keep in mind when designing a database? The most important thing is to make sure the structure is efficient and scalable. You don't want a database that becomes slow and unusable as the amount of data grows. I see. What kind of industries use databases the most? Honestly, just about every industry uses databases in some capacity. Some notable ones are finance, healthcare, and e-commerce. Interesting. Are there any new trends in database architecture that you think are worth mentioning? Yes, big data and cloud-based databases are becoming increasingly popular. They allow for the storage and analysis of massive amounts of data in real time. Wow, sounds like the future is going to be even more data-driven. Thanks for explaining all of this to me. No problem, happy to help. Hey B, have you ever wondered how we can improve our software testing process? Yes, actually. I've been thinking about it lately. Why, do you have any ideas? Well, as a software tester myself, I think we can benefit from adding more automation in our testing process. It could save us a lot of time and effort. That's a great point. I've also noticed that we tend to rely too much on manual testing. Maybe we should invest in some testing tools to make our jobs easier. Yes, we should definitely explore that option. I think it would improve our overall efficiency. Another area we could work on is our communication with the development team. Sometimes we encounter bugs that are not easily reproducible, and it takes a lot of back and forth to get it resolved. I agree. Maybe we can set up a regular meeting with the development team to discuss any issues we're encountering and come up with solutions together. That's a great suggestion. And speaking of meetings, I think we should also have a weekly status update meeting just for the testing team to ensure that we're all on the same page and working towards the same goals. I like that idea. It would really help us stay organized and focused. Well, it looks like we have some work to do, but I'm excited to see how these improvements will benefit our testing process. Definitely. And who knows, maybe we'll even get some positive feedback from our end users. That would be awesome. Let's get started on putting these ideas into action. Good morning, I'm a travel consultant and I'm here to help my clients choose a suitable rental car. Welcome to our rental car company. What type of car are you looking for? My clients are a family of four adults and they're planning to explore the scenic routes around Melbourne. Do you have any suggestions for the perfect car for them? Well, I would recommend our spacious SUVs or minivans for their group size. They can comfortably seat up to seven passengers and have plenty of space for luggage. That's great. What about the fuel efficiency of these vehicles? All of our SUVs and minivans are equipped with fuel-efficient engines, which will help them save money on petrol during their trip. Sounds like a great choice. Do you have any suggested travel routes around Melbourne that would be suitable for them? Definitely, I would suggest the Great Ocean Road Tour, which is one of the most popular road trips in Australia. They can also visit the Yarra Valley and enjoy some of the region's best wines and cuisine. That sounds wonderful. Any other suggestions? They can also consider visiting the Mornington Peninsula with its stunning beaches, hot springs, and wineries. That's perfect. Thank you so much for your assistance. You're welcome. It's our pleasure to provide quality service for our customers. Hi there. Are you checking in for the flight to Melbourne? Hi. Yes, that's right. Are you flying the plane? Indeed, I am. My name is Tom, and I'm the captain of this flight. Wow. It's great to meet you, Tom. 
My name is Sarah. Nice to meet you too, Sarah. Do you have your passport and boarding pass? Yes, here they are. Great. You're all set. Do you have any bags to check? No, I just have this carry-on backpack. Perfect. Please place it on the scale so that I can weigh it. Sure thing. Okay, your backpack meets our carry-on size and weight requirements. Here's your boarding pass. You're seated in 19B. Thanks, Tom. By the way, do you encounter a lot of turbulence on this route? Not usually, but it really depends on the weather conditions. We'll keep our eyes on the radar and give you updates during the flight. That's good to know. I'm a bit nervous about flying. No need to worry, Sarah. You're in good hands. We've got a smooth takeoff and landing planned. That's reassuring. Thanks, Tom. Anytime. Is there anything else you need help with? No, I think I'm all set. Thanks for your help. You're welcome. Have a great flight. Good morning. I'm an animal farmer here. How may I help you, sir? Good morning to you too. I'm a food scientist and I'm conducting research on how to improve meat quality. Can you tell me about your experience in raising animals? Of course. I specialize in raising cattle and pigs. I'm always looking for new ways to improve their diets and living conditions. That's great. What do you think are the key factors that affect the quality of meat? Well, it's important to ensure that the animals get a balanced diet. Their living conditions should also be clean and stress-free. We shouldn't forget about genetics either. It's important to choose high-quality breeding stock. I agree. Have you ever considered using specific feed supplements to improve meat quality? Yes, definitely. I've been working with a team to produce natural feed supplements that can enhance the flavor, texture, and nutrient content of meat. We've seen great results so far. That's fascinating. And what about techniques for meat processing and preservation? For beef, we use a process called aging to improve tenderness and flavor. We also work with our local abattoirs to ensure that the animals are processed humanely and safely. It sounds like you're doing great work. I have a feeling your techniques could be really useful for the food industry. Thank you. We're always looking for ways to improve. Maybe we could work together sometime? I'd love that. Let's exchange information and keep in touch. It's been great talking to you. Same here. Have a great day. Hey, B. I always wondered why information security experts wear black hats in movies. Do you have any idea? Ha <laughs> ha. It's a stereotype, eh? Black hats are usually associated with villains who try to hack into computer systems without permission. Oh, I see. So, in real life, you wouldn't wear a black hat, right? Definitely not. I'm all about ethical hacking and protecting data privacy, not breaking the law. That's great to hear. Speaking of protecting data, what are some essential measures we need to take to ensure customer data security in financial institutions? We need to have strict access controls, encryption, and regular software updates, to name a few. It's also crucial to train our staff to recognize and prevent cyber threats. Got it. It sounds like we need to be very careful with handling data, especially at a time where data breaches are common. Exactly, eh? There's no one-size-fits-all solution when it comes to data security. We need to constantly evaluate our protocols and stay up to date with emerging threats. I completely agree with you, B. It's good to know that we're working together to ensure our customers' confidentiality and trust in our institution. Yes, A. Our customers' trust is vital to our business success, and we owe it to them to protect their information properly. Speaking of which, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think I forgot my password to my online banking account. Oh no. Don't worry, A. We can reset it for you. But we need to confirm your identity first, of course. Of course. I'll bring my ID and passport to the bank tomorrow. Thanks for reminding me to keep my account secure, B. No problem, A. And hey, if you ever need any tips on how to stay safe online, you know who to ask. Absolutely, B. I'm glad we had this conversation. It's always good to brush up on our knowledge of data security. I couldn't agree more, A. And it's fun to have these conversations with someone who's not in the IT field. Haha, <laughs> I'm glad I can be your layman listener. Don't worry, I won't ask you to explain any complex algorithms to me. Phew. You had me scared there for a moment, eh? Hey, I know my limits. Thanks for the chat, B. I'll see you around. You're welcome, eh? Have a great day. Hey there, B. 
How's it going today? Good to see you, eh? I'm doing all right, thanks for asking. How about you? Not too bad, just busy figuring out how to optimize our manufacturing process. You know how it is. Yeah, tell me about it. What are you working on specifically? Right now, I'm looking at ways to reduce costs on our assembly line. I think we can increase efficiency without sacrificing quality. That sounds promising. Have you considered implementing automation technology? Actually, that's one of the ideas I had in mind. Maybe we could use robots to do some of the more menial tasks, freeing up our workers to focus on more specialized jobs. I like that idea. We could definitely improve our speed and productivity that way without reducing our workforce. Exactly. And speaking of the workforce, have you noticed any areas where we could train employees to be more efficient? Well, I think our quality control procedures could use some tightening up. Maybe if we provided more comprehensive training, we could reduce the number of defective products. Ah, good point. Have you thought about investing in new testing equipment? Actually, I have. I think we could benefit from some advanced technology that would catch defects before the products are shipped out. That's a great idea. I'll look into some options for that. How do you feel about switching up our supply chain? Hmm, that's interesting. What specifically are you thinking? Well, I think we could explore working with new suppliers in different regions or even overseas. It might take some initial investment, but it could save us money in the long run. I'd be open to exploring that. Let's discuss it further with our procurement team and see what options we have. Sounds good to me. And while we're at it, what do you think about experimenting with new materials for our products? I'm all for innovation, but we have to make sure that any new materials will still meet our quality and safety standards. Of course, I wouldn't want to compromise that. But I think if we do our research and test things thoroughly, we could potentially find a more cost-effective solution. Agreed. We can add that idea to our list of potential improvements. Excellent. I'm feeling really optimistic about what we can achieve here. Do you have any other suggestions for how we can streamline our manufacturing process? Well, I think we should be analyzing data regularly to identify areas where we might be wasting time or resources. We can't improve what we don't measure. That's very true. We should set up some systems to track our progress and monitor the impact of any changes we make. Exactly. And who knows, maybe we'll break our production record with all these changes. Haha, <laughs> let's hope so. It was great brainstorming with you. B, thanks for your insights. No problem, A. Looking forward to seeing what we can accomplish together. Hey B, I heard you're the expert on data backup. Can you tell me about ISO 27001? Sure thing, A. ISO 27001 is an international standard for information security management systems. Interesting. So how does it relate to data backup? Actually, one of the requirements is to have a documented backup plan in case of data loss or corruption. Ah, uh, I see. That makes sense. Do you have any tips for implementing a solid backup plan? Absolutely. First, make sure you determine what data needs to be backed up and how frequently it needs to be backed up. Got it. And what about storage? Do you have any recommendations? Yes, it's important to store backups offsite in case of a disaster. Cloud storage is a great option for this. That makes sense. And what about security measures? It's crucial to encrypt the backups to protect against unauthorized access or data breaches. Good point. Do you have any horror stories to share about data loss due to inadequate backup plans? I remember working with a company that lost years of financial data because they only had one backup that was stored on the same server as the original data. Yikes, that's a nightmare. So, what's the bottom line when it comes to ISO 27001 and data backup? The bottom line is that having a solid backup plan is critical to maintaining the security and integrity of your data. And following ISO 27001 guidelines can ensure you have a comprehensive plan in place. Thanks for the advice, B. I'm definitely going to implement some of these strategies in my own workplace. Happy to help, A. Let me know if you need any further guidance. Hi there. Thanks for setting up this meeting with me. I'm really excited about my new book. Of course. We're always excited to work with talented writers like you. So, tell me about your book. Well, it's called The Sassy Squirrel and the Mysterious Marshmallow. It's a children's book about a squirrel detective who solves a mystery with the help of a marshmallow. That sounds adorable. I love a good animal detective story. What age group is it aimed at? It's for kids ages 6 to 9. I think they'll really enjoy the whimsical characters and the silly mystery. Excellent. 
And have you thought about the illustrations? Yes, I have. I've been working with an amazing illustrator who really captures the spirit of the story. I think the two of you will work really well together. That's great to hear. And what's your timeline for completion? I'm hoping to have everything finished in about six months. The manuscript is essentially finished, and the illustrator is already underway with the sketches. Perfect. We can definitely work with that timeline. Is there anything else you need from us? Not at the moment, but thank you for asking. I know this will be a fun project to work on together. Absolutely. We can't wait to see the finished product. Thanks for coming in today. Hello there, welcome to Hawaii. My name is A, and I'll be your tour guide for the day. Are you excited for our adventure? Hi, A. Nice to meet you. Yes, I'm so excited. Hawaii is such a beautiful place. Absolutely. We have some great nature trails and scenic views planned for today. Did you remember to bring sunscreen and sturdy shoes? Yes, I did. Can't wait to explore these trails and see the ocean view. That's great to hear. We'll start with the jungle trail and then head to the coast to watch the dolphins. Do you like dolphins? Oh, I love dolphins. They are so cute and smart. Agreed. They are amazing creatures to watch. After that, we'll go snorkeling in the coral reefs. Have you ever gone snorkeling before? Yes, I have once before. I can't wait to see the beautiful fish and coral. Perfect. We'll also stop by some local shops and try some traditional Hawaiian food. Do you eat seafood? Yes, I do. I love trying new foods while on vacation. Great. We'll have some fish and pulp bowls at one of the local restaurants nearby. They also have some delicious fruit smoothies and shaved ice. Yum. That all sounds amazing. Thank you for planning such a fun day, eh? It's my pleasure. Hawaii is a beautiful place and I love sharing it with visitors. Are you ready to start our adventure? Yes, I am. Let's go. Hello there. How's it going today? Hi. It's going well, thank you. So, what brings you down here to the weather department? Well, I just thought I'd come down and see what kind of weather we're in for today. We've got a flight heading to Hawaii, and I want to make sure we're clear for takeoff. Ah, uh, I see. Well, the good news is that it looks like it's going to be a clear day for you guys. No storms or anything like that in the forecast. That's fantastic news. I always get a little nervous when there's rain or snow in the forecast. Yeah, I can imagine. Mother Nature can be pretty unpredictable sometimes. Absolutely. You guys must have some pretty high-tech equipment to be able to predict the weather like you do. Oh yeah, we've got all kinds of fancy gadgets and gizmos. But you know what they say, sometimes a good old-fashioned barometer is all you really need. Haha, <laughs> that's a good point. Well, thanks for the update. I'm going to go grab a coffee and wait for my co-pilot to arrive. No problem. Enjoy your flight, and if anything changes with the weather, just give us a call. Will do, thanks again. And hey, if you ever need a ride in the cockpit, just let me know. Laughs, sounds good. I might just have to take you up on that someday. Have a nice flight. Hey, have you noticed how secure some websites are these days? Absolutely. It's like every website has its own bouncer now. Yeah, exactly. It's almost like the internet is one giant nightclub. Except this club has way more hackers than drunken idiots. Haha, <laughs> so true. But I guess that's where cybersecurity comes in, right? That and a good firewall. What do you look for in a secure website? Well, for starters, a green padlock in the browser bar is always a good sign. Yes, that means the website has an SSL certificate and your information is encrypted. Exactly. And you can never go wrong with using two-factor authentication. Totally agree. It's the ultimate wingman when it comes to online security. And it doesn't hurt to use complex passwords too. Definitely. And you know what else helps? Regularly updating your software and antivirus. Bingo. That's how you stay one step ahead of the hackers. Speaking of which, did you hear about that company that got hacked for like a bazillion dollars? Yeah, I did. That's why it's so important to have airtight security measures in place. Exactly. We can't let those online creeps win. Agreed. So, have you been binge-watching anything good lately? Haha, <laughs> a sudden change of topic, but yeah, I've been watching Stranger Things on Netflix. What about you? Nice. I'm still hooked on Game of Thrones. Can't believe it's almost over though. 
Yeah, it's a bittersweet ending for sure. But hey, at least we can binge watch it anytime we want, knowing our online security is top notch. Haha, <laughs> you're right about that. Alright, catch you later. See ya, buddy. Hey. What have you been up to lately? Not much, just been learning a lot about sustainable fishing. Really? That's cool. What's that all about? Well, you know how we love eating seafood. But with overfishing and other issues, the oceans are being seriously damaged. Yeah, I've heard about that. So what's the solution? Sustainable fishing practices, like using nets with smaller holes so only mature fish can be caught and limiting the amount that can be caught in a certain area. That makes sense. But does it affect the fishing industry? Sure, it means that there might be fewer fishermen employed, but in the long run it will benefit everyone. Makes sense. Are there any other ways to help with sustainability? Definitely. Something as simple as choosing to buy seafood that's sustainably sourced can make a difference. That's really interesting. I'll have to start paying more attention to where my seafood comes from. Absolutely. It may seem like a small thing, but every little bit counts. It's great to know that there are ways for us to still enjoy seafood while being environmentally responsible. Definitely. And who knows, maybe sustainable fishing practices will inspire other industries to be more sustainable too. I hope so. We need to take care of our planet now more than ever. Agreed. It starts with small changes like this. Hi there. How can I help you today? Hey. I'm the chef from the airline that serves your airport. I was just wondering about the catering options you have here. Of course. We have a variety of options available for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. What type of cuisine would you prefer? Well, we always try to provide a mix of options for our passengers, so anything from Asian to Western cuisine would be great. That's perfect. We have a wonderful sushi restaurant here that specializes in fresh seafood, as well as a burger joint that serves up delicious, juicy burgers. Sounds great. What are your vegetarian options like? We have a vegetarian restaurant that offers a wide range of dishes, from falafel wraps to vegetable soups. Wonderful. We always try to cater to all dietary needs. That's great to hear. In terms of drinks, we have a bar that serves up some great craft beers and cocktails. That sounds amazing. Do you also offer rejuvenating smoothies and juices for our first-class passengers? Absolutely. Our juice bar has some delicious options to choose from. Oh, and before I forget, what's the Wi-Fi situation like at this airport? There's free Wi-Fi available throughout the airport, so your passengers can stay connected during their layovers. Wonderful. It sounds like you guys have everything covered. Thanks for your help. No problem at all. Happy to assist you. Safe travels. Hey B, have you read anything on ISO 27001 Incident Response? Hey A, yeah, I have. But honestly, the term incident response sounds like we're talking about firefighters. Haha, <laughs> true. Maybe they should call it cyber firefighters. Yeah, but cyber criminals would just laugh at them. I know right, it's like giving them a free pass for finding weak spots. And did you know that ISO 27001 focuses on the adage prevention is better than cure? Wow, so it's like getting a vaccine for your IT systems. Exactly, eh. It's important to be proactive and prevent cyber attacks before they happen. Yeah, but what if something still goes wrong? Well, with ISO 27001, you have a well-maintained incident response plan just in case of emergencies. Like a superhero in standby mode, waiting to save the day. More like having a safety net for your IT systems. Right, I get you. It's like, even if you make a mistake, ISO 27001 has got your back. And who wouldn't want that kind of support in these challenging times? Yeah, it's like having a buddy to save you when you stumble. That's why ISO 27001 is the best player in the game for ensuring data security. All right, I'm sold. I'll keep ISO 27001 incident response in mind. Good idea, eh? It's always better to have superheroes on your side. Hi there. I'm really excited to work with you on this project. What kind of game are you thinking of designing for this learning app? Hey, nice to meet you too. I was thinking of creating something similar to a simulation game that would allow users to experience different scenarios that they might encounter in real life. Oh, that sounds interesting. Maybe we could incorporate mini games within the simulation to make it more engaging for users. Yes, that's a great idea. We could have quizzes or puzzles that would test the user's knowledge and understanding of the topic they're learning. And what about having a leaderboard so users can compete against each other while learning? 
That's a brilliant idea. We could have an optional feature where users can connect with each other and challenge one another to see who completes the game first. I think that would really motivate users to learn more and be more involved in the app. Maybe we could also have incentives for users who complete certain milestones. Absolutely. We could grant users badges or points whenever they achieve a certain level of knowledge or complete a certain task within the game. It would be great to allow users to show off their achievements on social media. I couldn't agree more. I think creating a sense of community within the app would be key to its success. What do you think about adding some fun animations or characters to keep users entertained? Yes, that would be a great addition too. We could have a selection of cute characters that guide users through the app and make the experience more exciting. I love it. This app is going to be so much fun. Do you have any ideas for what kind of topics we could cover in the game? Well, how about we start with something like financial literacy or basic coding skills? These are essential skills that everyone should have, and a game format would make learning them more enjoyable. I think those are fantastic topics to start with. Let's get started on building this app and create something truly amazing. Hey B, have you noticed some of the bugs we've been running into lately during testing? Yeah, I have. They've been causing some issues in the development process. Well, I've been thinking about some ways we could improve our testing process. Oh really? Do tell. I'm thinking about implementing more automated testing procedures. Interesting. Do you think that would help us catch the bugs more efficiently? Absolutely. We could save a lot of time and have more accurate results. I like the sound of that. Have you looked into any specific tools we could use? Yeah, I've been researching some options like Selenium and Appium. How long do you think it would take to implement these changes? It shouldn't take too long to get everything set up, maybe a few weeks at most. That sounds reasonable. Let's schedule a meeting to discuss the details and get started. Great, I'll start working on a proposal to present at the meeting. Perfect, we'll make sure to have all the necessary resources ready for you. Thanks B, I appreciate the support. No problem, we're all in this together. By the way, how did the latest version of the software perform during your team's testing? It had some issues, but they were mostly minor bugs. Overall, it's looking pretty good. That's good to hear. We'll keep refining the process to make it even better. Agreed. Let's keep up the good work. Definitely, let's catch those bugs before they cause any more trouble. Ha, ah, sounds like a plan. Hello there. Nice to see you enjoying the beautiful day in the park. Yes, it's wonderful. I find nature very inspiring for my poetry. That's interesting. I'm a writer myself, and I always thought poetry was a bit too abstract for me. Oh, but writing is all about expressing yourself. And you can convey so much through literature. That's true. But how do you ensure that your readers understand your message? Well, that's the beauty of poetry. You don't have to spell things out. You can imply and suggest, leaving room for interpretation. I see, but isn't that a bit ambiguous? Ambiguity can be powerful, especially for conveying deep emotions or complex ideas. It's all about striking a balance. I understand. What about you? How do you ensure that your readers connect with your work? My poetry is all about tapping into universal emotions and experiences that people can relate to. I also try to be authentic and genuine. I like that approach. And how do you handle criticism? Well, not everyone will love my work, and that's okay. I try to take feedback constructively and grow from it. That's a good attitude. And what advice do you have for aspiring writers and poets? Just keep writing. And don't be afraid to take risks and experiment. The beauty of literature is that there are no rules. I couldn't agree more. It was great talking to you, B. Same to you, A. Keep creating and inspiring. Hi there. As a software developer, I'm wondering how we can handle the large amount of requests our clients are sending. As a database administrator, I think we should consider optimizing our database structure to ensure faster retrieval of data. That's a great point. Maybe we can also implement caching techniques to reduce the number of requests hitting the server. Yes, that would definitely help. We can also look at load balancing to distribute the requests across multiple servers. Good idea. Speaking of servers, have you ever heard of the ice cream cone server architecture? Chuckles, no, I haven't. What's that? Well, it's a shape where the load balancer sits at the top, and then the servers are shaped like scoops of ice cream below it. Laughs, that's quite a creative name but I think we can stick to a more traditional setup for our company. Laughs, yeah, maybe that's for the best. But I couldn't resist sharing that with you. 
Smiling, no problem. It's always good to have a humorous moment during a serious discussion. True. So, let's get back to our topic. How about implementing a rate limiter to prevent excessive requests from the same client? That's a great suggestion. We can set it up based on IP address or user account to ensure fair usage for all our clients. Exactly. It's important to maintain a balance between serving clients efficiently and maintaining our server stability. Agreed. And by implementing these techniques, we can minimize downtime and ensure a great experience for our clients. You're absolutely right. It's important to constantly improve our system to ensure smooth operations for everyone involved. I couldn't have said it better myself. Thanks for the great discussion, A. No problem, B. It's always a pleasure discussing solutions with you. Hey B, how's it going tonight? It's going great. We've had some really interesting orders tonight. That's fantastic to hear. What's been the most popular cocktail so far? Surprisingly, it's been the spicy margarita. The customers really seem to enjoy the kick of jalapeno in their drink. Wow, sounds like a winner. And how about the food menu? The Korean fried chicken sliders have been a hit. People love the crispy chicken and spicy mayo. I'm glad to hear that. It's great to offer a unique and delicious menu for our customers. Speaking of unique, I was thinking of trying a new cocktail recipe next week. Maybe something with a floral twist. That sounds intriguing. We should definitely give it a try. And let's also experiment with some new appetizer options. Absolutely. I'm always up for trying out new flavors and combinations. That's what makes our bar stand out. We're always pushing the boundaries and creating something new. Definitely. And with the support of the Furkanon community, we can continue to succeed. It's been great working with you, B. We make a great team. I couldn't agree more. Here's to our continued success. Hey. How's your day going, B? It's been busy, just trying to optimize the database servers. Yeah, it's always better to keep performance at an efficient pace. What's the biggest challenge you're facing with the databases? I am thinking about migrating to a NoSQL database system. But I've got some apprehensions. What do you suggest? Well, if the project scope is for a heavy read-write application, I'd go for a NoSQL database. What are the performance parameters you're targeting? I'm looking for faster data access and shorter query response times. Then, NoSQL databases would give you the flexibility to build more agile applications with faster data access times. However, you must keep in mind the data integrity and normalization levels. I see where you're coming from. I will take this into account when I put together the performance benchmarks for the migration. Great. Are you already using any cloud computing platforms for the databases? Yes, I am using AWS. It has worked out well for me in the past. That's quite a popular platform amongst database administrators. Do you know about Amazon Redshift? Yes, it's a column-based database system that's good for handling large datasets. I had a chance to try it out not so long ago. Indeed, Redshift is a great option for your use case. It helps you avoid costly infrastructure build-outs and maintenance while providing excellent performance. That's exactly the kind of platform I'm looking for. Thanks for the suggestion. Any other tools or services that you'd recommend? Definitely. Have you heard about Amazon RDS and Aurora? Well, I've heard of them but haven't used them yet. What are they about? Aurora is a relational database engine built for the cloud that combines the speed of high-end commercial databases with the cost-effectiveness of open-source databases. RDS, on the other hand, supports several relational databases like Postgres, MySQL, and Oracle. Both are extremely scalable and cost-effective. Sounds impressive. I will definitely look into them. Hey, thanks for giving me all those great suggestions. No problem. Always happy to help out a fellow database administrator. Good luck with your optimization and migration endeavors. Thank you. I truly appreciate your advice. Good morning. How are you feeling today? I'm a bit nervous, but I trust you will take care of me. Don't worry. We'll do our best to make sure you're comfortable throughout the operation. Can you tell me more about the procedure? Sure. We'll be performing a laparoscopic procedure to remove your gallbladder. Okay. That doesn't sound too bad. It's a relatively routine procedure, but we'll keep an eye on your vital signs and make sure everything goes smoothly. How soon after the surgery will I be able to go home? In most cases, patients are discharged the same day or within 24 hours. That's great to hear. Will I need to follow any special instructions after the surgery? 
yes, we'll provide you with a list of post-operative instructions, including what to eat and how to care for the incision site. Thanks for all your help. I'm glad I chose your medical facility for this surgery. It's our pleasure to take care of you. Just relax and we'll take it from here. Hey there. Have you seen how amazing the view is from up here of the volcanic eruption? Yes, it's breathtaking. I've never seen anything quite like it before. It is definitely a sight to behold. Have you been on any of the trails yet? Yes, I just came back from hiking the Kilauea Iki Trail. It was challenging, but the view was worth it. That's great. I haven't had the opportunity to hike that one yet. Did you see any lava flows? Yes, I saw some red-hot lava flowing down a small hill. It was quite thrilling. Wow, that sounds amazing. I hope I get to see it before I leave. You should definitely take a helicopter tour before you leave. It's a stunning way to see the lava flows from above. That sounds incredible. I'm definitely going to give that a try. Thanks for the suggestion. No problem. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Have you tried any of the local food yet? Yes, I've tried the Kalua pork and poi. The flavors are so unique and delicious. That's great to hear. The local cuisine is definitely one of my favorite parts of visiting Hawaii. I couldn't agree more. I'm already planning my next trip back here. Hawaii has so much to offer. I'm sure you'll have plenty to keep you occupied on your next visit. I'm already looking forward to it. Thanks for the tips and company today. No problem, it was great meeting you. Enjoy the rest of your trip. Good afternoon and welcome to the Sydney Opera House. My name is Sam and I will be your tour guide today. Hi Sam, thanks for having us. We've been excited to see this iconic landmark in person. I'm glad to hear that. This place is truly a masterpiece of architecture and design. You'll be amazed by what you'll see inside. That sounds incredible. Can you give us a bit of history about the Opera House? Absolutely. The Opera House was officially opened in 1973 by Queen Elizabeth II. It took 14 years to build and cost over $100 million. Wow, that's quite a lot of money. But it's absolutely worth it given how beautiful it is. Yes, indeed. And did you know that the Opera House is considered a UNESCO World Heritage Site? No, I didn't know that. It's amazing to think that this structure has received such a prestigious designation. It truly is. And now, if you'll come with me, we'll begin our tour of the Opera House. Lead the way, Sam. Let's see what this place has in store for us. Wonderful, let's go. Hey, have you heard about ISO 27001? I heard it's important for asset protection and recovery. Yes, I have. ISO standards are no joke when it comes to security measures. That's true. So, what exactly does ISO 27001 cover? It mainly focuses on the development of an information security management system, ISMS, for organizations. Got it. So, what are the benefits of implementing ISO 27001? Well, it helps minimize risks of data breaches, ensures confidentiality, integrity, and availability of information, and establishes a clear framework for security management. Wow, sounds like it covers a lot of ground. Have you ever been a part of an organization that implemented ISO 27001? Yes, I have. And I can tell you from personal experience, it definitely improves the overall security of an organization. That's good to know. So, how can ISO 27001 help in terms of asset recovery? By having a proper incident management and business continuity plan in place, organizations can quickly assess the damage and recover assets in a timely manner. I see. So, what are some potential challenges organizations may face when implementing ISO 27001? Well, it can be a time-consuming process, and there may be resistance from employees who are not used to enforcing strict security measures. Right, I can imagine that but ultimately, it seems like the benefits outweigh the challenges. Absolutely. And as technology continues to advance, it's becoming more and more important for organizations to prioritize their security measures. Agreed. Thanks for sharing your knowledge about ISO 27001 with me. No problem. Always happy to talk about security. Hi there, B. How are you? Hey, A. Pretty good. Just crunching some data to help boost sales at our retail company. How about you? Nice. I'm doing the same thing. I've been working on optimizing our database for faster performance. Great to hear that. Speaking of performance, have you figured out any key metrics for analyzing customer behavior yet? 
Yes, I believe that tracking customer interactions and purchase patterns can help us understand what products are selling well and what strategies work best. Absolutely. And have you considered implementing machine learning algorithms to detect patterns and offer personalized recommendations to customers? Yes, I think it can be leveraged to improve sales by identifying hidden insights and making accurate predictions. That's the spirit. And you know what they say, data is the new oil. Haha, <laughs> I've heard that before. It means that data is the most valuable resource today, right? Yes, it's a metaphor for the data-driven economy. And as they say, with great data comes great responsibility. Ah, the classic Spider-Man quote. But it's true, we need to ensure data privacy and security when handling customer information. Absolutely. And on a lighter note, have you heard about the data scientist who walked into the bar and ordered a drink? No, what happened? The bartender said, what's the magic word? And the data scientist replied, please bring me some data. Ha 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 ha, that's funny. You know what they say, a good data joke is one that doesn't need explaining. Speaking of jokes, did you hear about the data warehouse that got attacked by a hacker? No, what happened? They stole all the tables and chairs. Ha ha ha, that's hilarious. You always have a good one, B. Hey, I try my best. But in all seriousness, let's use our data prowess to help our company succeed. Absolutely, let's do it. Hey B, have you heard about ISO 27001 nonconformance? Yes, I have. It's basically when an organization fails to meet the requirements of the ISO 27001 standard. That's right. And what happens when an organization has a nonconformance? Well, they have to take corrective action to resolve the issue and prevent it from happening again. Exactly. And why is it important for organizations to comply with ISO 27001? Compliance helps organizations ensure the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of their information. Plus, it enhances their credibility with clients and stakeholders. I could not agree more. Can you give me an example of a nonconformance? Sure. A nonconformance could be something as simple as not adequately documenting a risk assessment process. And what action should an organization take to fix this issue? They could create a more detailed risk assessment procedure and document the process in detail to comply with the requirements of the standard. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Have you ever had to deal with a nonconformance issue in your work? Yes, I have. It's not uncommon, but it's important to stay on top of compliance to avoid potential issues. Definitely. Hey, do you know if there are any certifications available for ISO 27001 compliance? Yes, there are. Organizations can get certified if they successfully pass an audit conducted by an accredited certification body. Wow, that's great. Hey, you're pretty knowledgeable about this stuff. Have you considered becoming an ISO 27001 consultant? Ah, I never thought about that, but it's definitely an interesting idea. Maybe I should look into it. You should. Hey, thanks for the great chat. I learned a lot about ISO 27001 nonconformance. No problem, happy to help anytime. Good morning, B. How are you feeling today? Good morning, A. I'm feeling a bit tired, but excited for this yoga class. I totally understand. Yoga is a great way to start the day and get your energy flowing. Let's get started. Sounds great. I'm ready to stretch and relax. All right, let's begin with some gentle breathing exercises. Inhale deeply and exhale slowly. Inhales and exhales that feel so relaxing already. Great job, B. Now, let's move into some sun salutations to warm up our bodies. Moves into downward dog position, this is always a challenge for me, but I'll do my best. Remember to focus on your breath and take things at your own pace. No need to push yourself too hard. That's a good reminder. I always feel like I need to be perfect at yoga. Yoga isn't about being perfect, B. It's about finding balance and peace within yourself. Thank you for reminding me. That takes the pressure off. You're welcome. Now let's move into some warrior poses. Remember to engage your core and keep your breath steady. Moves into warrior two pose this one feels great for my legs and hips. Yes, it's a great pose for building strength and flexibility. You're doing great, B. Thank you, A. This is such a wonderful way to start the day. I feel so peaceful and grounded. That's the beauty of yoga, B. It helps us connect with our bodies, minds, and spirits. Let's move into some cool-down poses now. Moves into child's pose, I love this one. It feels like I'm giving myself a big hug. 
That's a great way to describe it. Take a few deep breaths here, and then we'll move into Savasana for final relaxation. Close his eyes and breathe deeply. This is exactly what I needed today. Thank you, A. You're welcome, B. It's always a pleasure to share the gift of yoga with others. Have a great day. Hey B, how's it going? Pretty good, thanks. I'm excited to work on the grill with you today. Me too. It's always a pleasure to cook fresh seafood and meats by the beach. Definitely. Have you tried the new shrimp and lobster we got in this morning? Yes, I did. They look really good. I was thinking of butter grilling them. Sounds delicious. I was thinking of seasoning the lamb chops with rosemary and garlic. Great idea. I'll marinate the chicken drumsticks with lemon and herbs too. Awesome. Speaking of lemon, do you need me to squeeze some for the grilled fish? Yes, please. And can you also check if we have enough skewers for the kebabs? Sure thing. By the way, have you heard the joke about the grill? No, what is it? Why did the grill join the band? I don't know, why? Because it wanted to make some sizzling music. Haha, <laughs> that's a good one. All right, let's get started on the grill. Got it. I'm ready to take orders too. Let's make sure everyone leaves here with a full stomach and happy smiles. Hi there. Have you been brainstorming on how to improve our customer experience with digital technology lately? Absolutely. It's high time we find ways to attract more customers by enhancing our digital presence. But where do we start? There are so many different digital tools and platforms to choose from. I know, it can be overwhelming. But I was thinking we could start with simple things like improving our website's UI slash UX and offering more online payment options. Sounds like a good plan. We could also invest in chatbots to make it easier for customers to get support 24-7. Yes, chatbots are great for customer service automation. Customers can have their questions answered and issues resolved without the need for human intervention. And we could use social media to increase engagement and build a stronger brand presence. Definitely. Social media is a powerful tool for brand awareness and customer engagement. We can use it to start conversations and build relationships with our customers. Speaking of relationships, we could also use CRM software to keep track of our customers' preferences and purchase history, so we can offer personalized recommendations and promotions. That's a great idea. Personalization is key to improving customer satisfaction and loyalty. Plus, we could use data analytics to gain insights into our customers' behavior and identify areas where we can improve. Right, data analytics can help us optimize our marketing campaigns and identify new opportunities for growth. It's amazing how much we can do with digital technology to improve our customers' experience. Yes, and we can continue to adapt and evolve our strategy as new technologies emerge. I'm excited to get started on this project. I think we can really make a difference for our customers. Me too. Let's get to work and see how far we can take this. Good morning, B. How are you doing today? Good morning, A. I'm doing great, thanks for asking. How about you? I'm doing well, just busy harvesting the latest crop of vegetables and fruits. What do you need today? Well, I'm interested in buying some of your fresh produce. What's in season right now? We have a variety of vegetables and fruits in season. Our tomatoes, lettuce, and cucumbers are particularly fresh and tasty right now. Hmm, I'm definitely interested in buying some of those. Could you give me some recommendations on what to buy? Sure, if you like a sweet and juicy burst of flavor, I highly recommend our cherry tomatoes. They're perfect for salads or snacking on. That sounds good. And what about the lettuce and cucumbers? Our lettuce is freshly picked and crisp, perfect for putting in a sandwich or a salad. Our cucumbers are also crunchy and refreshing, great on their own or in a salad. Wow, I'm sold. How much would it be for a basket of each? For a basket of cherry tomatoes, lettuce, and cucumbers, it would be $15 altogether. That's a great deal. I'll take them. Thanks, A. My pleasure, B. I hope you enjoy them. See you soon. Hi, I'm the database administrator for this healthcare company. Nice to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you too. I'm the software engineer in charge of designing the database system. Awesome. I'm really excited to work with you on this. So, what are some of the key requirements for this database? Well, obviously security is a huge priority. We need to make sure that patient information is stored safely and is only accessible to authorized personnel. Right, of course. What about scalability and flexibility? 
we'll need to be able to accommodate for changing needs and increasing amounts of data. Definitely. And we should also consider integrating with other systems and applications that the company is using. Great points. I think one of the biggest challenges will be ensuring data accuracy and consistency, especially with the amount of sensitive information we'll be dealing with. Agreed. We'll need to have strict data validation and error handling processes in place. I was thinking we could use a combination of encryption, access controls, and audit logs to maximize security. That sounds good to me. And for scalability, we could use a cloud-based database solution that can expand as needed. Yes, and we could implement backups to ensure data recovery in case of any disasters or failures. Perfect. This is shaping up to be a really robust and reliable system. It sure is. Working together, I think we can create a database that will make a big difference in the healthcare industry. Agreed. It's great to be part of a project that can have such a positive impact on people's lives. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to making it happen. Hey, have you ever had to clean a really messy room before? Yeah, I've had to clean up some pretty gross places before. Why do you ask? Well, I feel like my room is getting out of control. Would you be willing to give me some tips? Sure, you just have to tackle it one step at a time. First, pick up any big items on the floor and put them away. Okay, got it. What should I do next? Next, start with the surfaces like your desk and dresser. Wipe them down with a cleaning spray. That sounds easy enough. What about the dust on the curtains and blinds? You can use a duster or a vacuum with an attachment to get those hard-to-reach places. Good thinking. What about the closet? That's always a mess for me. Take everything out and place the items in piles, keep, donate, or throw away. Then, organize the remaining items back in the closet. I'm starting to feel more confident about cleaning my room now. Do you have any other tips? Yes, don't forget to vacuum the floors and wash any dirty clothes or bedding. Thanks for all of your help. I think I can handle it now. No problem. Happy cleaning. Good morning. How are you feeling today, B? Good morning. I'm feeling much better. Thank you. How about you? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. How was your night? Did you sleep well? Yes, I did. The bed is very comfortable here. That's great to hear. Have you had breakfast yet? Yes, I have. The food here is surprisingly good. Yes, we have a great kitchen staff. Is there anything else you need this morning? Actually, do you think I could get some fresh air? I've been cooped up in here for a while. Absolutely. Let me help you up and we can take a little walk outside. Thank you. That sounds wonderful. So, tell me a little about yourself. What do you do for fun? Well, I love playing tennis and reading books. I also enjoy traveling. That sounds great. Have you been able to travel recently? Not since my injury, unfortunately. But I hope to plan a trip soon. That's a great idea. Where do you think you might go? I've always wanted to go to Australia. What about you? Where's your dream vacation spot? Oh, I'd love to go to Hawaii. I've never been to a tropical paradise like that. That sounds amazing. Maybe we can plan a trip together when we're both feeling better. That's a deal. All right, let's head back inside. I'll make sure you're comfortable for the rest of the day. Hey B, have you ever heard of ISO 27001 Vulnerability Assessment? Yes, I have A. That's about identifying and addressing potential security weaknesses in an organization, right? Correct. You know your stuff. But have you ever done it yourself? Yes, I had a chance to do it in my previous job. It was quite challenging, but fulfilling. That's great. What did you like about it? I enjoyed being a detective for a day. Trying to find vulnerabilities and loopholes reminded me of those mystery game apps. Haha. <laughs> I know what you mean. It's like we're solving a puzzle or playing a game. Yeah, exactly. And the best part is when you find a vulnerability, you could fix it before someone takes advantage of it. Absolutely. It's like being a superhero and saving the day. Speaking of superheroes, have you ever imagined ourselves as Batman and Robin fighting the cyber criminals and protecting the organization? Haha. <laughs> That's funny. Although we might need some gadgets or tools to do so. True, but we already have our computers and software to conduct the assessment. It's like our own Batmobile and equipment. Wow, you're right. ISO 27001 Vulnerability Assessment is the perfect job for both detectives and superheroes. Definitely. 
Let's embrace our inner Batman and Robin and make our organization a safer place. Hey B, how's it going? Great, thanks. How about you? I'm doing well. I noticed there have been some issues with the network lately. Have you been working on any solutions? Yeah, actually I have. I'm thinking of implementing some load balancers to distribute traffic more evenly and prevent any overloads. That sounds like a good idea. Have you thought about setting up redundancy in case of any hardware failures? Definitely. I've been looking into setting up failover servers to keep everything up and running in case of any incidents. It's always better to be prepared. How about improving the connection speed? We could look into upgrading our internet connection and implementing advanced DNS server configurations to increase overall network performance. Those are great ideas. I think with these optimizations, our service uptime will definitely go up. Agreed. And if all else fails, we could always offer free pizza to any users affected by any outages. Haha, <laughs> I like your thinking. Hopefully we won't have to resort to that though. Of course not, but it never hurts to have a backup plan. And who doesn't love pizza? Very true. Speaking of which, have you tried that new pizza place down the street? No, not yet. Is it good? It's amazing. We should definitely check it out sometime after work. Sounds like a plan. But first, let's get this network optimized and running smoothly. Agreed. Let's get to work. Hi there, B. It's good to see you again. Hi, eight same year. What brings you to this meeting on network security? I'm here to share my expertise as an information security engineer. We need to ensure our government agency's network security is up to date and effective. That's a wise decision. So, what's your plan to establish the high-level network security measures? We'll begin with a thorough vulnerability assessment to identify the network's potential weaknesses. Then, we can patch the vulnerabilities and enhance the network security protocols. Sounds like a sound plan. And how do you stay up to date on new security threats and solutions? We read tech news, attend conferences, and network with other IT professionals. We strive to be always prepared for unexpected cyber attacks. That's smart. As a systems administrator, I know how crucial it is to have up-to-date security measures. Do you think it's important for all government agencies to adopt similar network security protocols? Absolutely. A cohesive security plan across all government agencies will ultimately lead to more effective protection of sensitive government data. We can learn from each other's cyber threats and solutions to improve our security measures. I couldn't agree more. Speaking of security measures, have you ever seen an IT security expert on a hoverboard? Laughs, nope, but I've seen a few riding around the office on their segways. Laughs, that's hilarious. Thanks for the good laugh, eh? No problem, B. It's never a dull moment in the world of IT security, even though it can be serious business. Absolutely, we have to laugh sometimes to keep our sanity in check. Laughs. Laughs, well, let's go back to the serious topic of cybersecurity before we laugh ourselves out of this meeting. Yes, that's a good idea. Let's get back to work. Hi B, have you heard about the new ISO 27001 information security policy? Yes, I have. It's supposed to be very important for companies that deal with a lot of data. Exactly. It's all about protecting sensitive information. I think it's especially important nowadays with all the threats of cyber attacks. Yes, and the best way to combat those threats is to have a solid information security policy in place. I completely agree. But I also think it's important to have a policy that's easy to understand and implement. That's true. You don't want employees to feel overwhelmed or confused by the policy. And you also want to make sure everyone is on board with the policy and actually follows it. Definitely. It's not enough to just have a policy. You need to make sure it's being properly enforced. That's why it's so important to have a clear set of guidelines and protocols to follow. And it's also important to regularly review and update the policy to make sure it's still effective. Absolutely. Technology is always evolving, so our policies need to evolve with it. I'm just glad we have a strong information security team to help us navigate all of this. Me too. At least we can feel confident that our data is in good hands. Hey, have you tried Rosti before? No, what's that? It's a Swiss dish made mainly of grated potatoes. It's crispy on the outside and soft on the inside really delicious. Ah, uh, sounds like hash browns. Are they similar? They're similar, but Rosti is thicker and less oily. Plus, you can add all sorts of toppings to it, like bacon, cheese, or mushrooms. That sounds yummy. 
I'm always up for trying new foods. Do you know where we can find Rosti around here? There's a Swiss restaurant a few blocks away that makes amazing Rosti. We should definitely check it out. I'm game. But, do we have to eat it the Swiss way? You know, with all sorts of utensils and whatnot? Haha, <laughs> not necessarily. But, it's their tradition, so it's worth a try. You might even like it. All right, challenge accepted. Let's go and get our Rosti on. Yes. I can't wait to see your reaction when you take the first bite. Rosti lovers unite. This is going to be fun. I'm so excited. Let's go. Good morning, how are you feeling today? Not too great, I've been having a terrible headache. I see. Let me take your blood pressure and temperature first. Okay, sure. Your blood pressure is a little high. Have you been stressed lately? Actually, yes. I've been working long hours and not getting enough sleep. That could definitely be the cause of your headache. I'll prescribe some medication to help with the pain and give you some tips for reducing your stress levels. Thank you, doctor. That would be appreciated. It's important to take care of ourselves, especially during busy times. Have you been eating well and exercising? I haven't had much time for that lately. I understand. Just remember that taking care of your body is important for your overall health and well-being. Let's work together to make a plan for you to prioritize self-care. That sounds like a good idea. I'm glad you're on board. Now, let's talk about any other symptoms you've been experiencing. I've also been feeling really tired lately. How many hours of sleep are you getting each night? Maybe around six or seven hours. That could be contributing to your fatigue. The recommended amount of sleep for adults is seven to eight hours. Let's talk about some strategies to help you get more restful sleep. Okay, that would be helpful. I'll also schedule a follow-up appointment in a few weeks to see how you're feeling and make any necessary adjustments to your treatment plan. Thank you so much, doctor. I appreciate your time and guidance. Of course, it's my job to help you feel better. Remember to take it easy and prioritize your health in the coming weeks. I will. Thanks again. Good morning. How may I assist you today? Good morning. I am looking to apply for a personal loan. Sure, we have different types of loans available. How much would you like to borrow? I was thinking about $10,000. Great, and what's the purpose of the loan? I want to buy a new car. All right, I see. Do you have any collateral to put up for the loan? Yes, I have a property that I can use. That's perfect. We can definitely work with that. How long will it take to process my application? It'll take about one to two business days to process everything. Sounds good. What are the interest rates like? Our rates are very competitive. We can discuss the details once your loan application has been approved. All right, thank you for your help. Not a problem. Is there anything else you need assistance with? No, that's all for now. All right then, have a great day. Hi there, B. Have you had a chance to go over the latest draft of my book? Yes, I have. It's looking great, but there are a few areas that could use some work. All right. Let's go over them. Well, first off, there are a few sentences that could be rephrased to make the meaning clearer. Got it. I'll make the necessary adjustments. Also, have you considered adding more humor to the book? That's a great suggestion. I'll definitely think about how I can inject some humor into it. It doesn't have to be all serious, you know. A lighthearted approach can make it more appealing to readers. I completely agree. I'll see what I can come up with. And lastly, the ending could be stronger. It kind of fizzles out. I see what you mean. I'll brainstorm some ideas to make the ending more impactful. Perfect. Overall, though, it's shaping up to be a really great book. Thanks, B. I couldn't have done it without your help and feedback. Anytime. Let's schedule another meeting to go over the next draft. Sounds like a plan. Thanks again for your guidance. Good morning, B. How are you feeling today? Good morning, A. I'm feeling a bit stiff, but ready to get my stretch on. Great mindset. As they say, the pain of discipline is less than the pain of regret. Let's start by finding our center and focusing on our breathing. That sounds good. Takes a deep breath. So, A, have you always been a yogi? Actually, no. I used to be a ballet dancer, but I found yoga to be a more sustainable way to maintain my flexibility and overall wellness. Oh cool. 
I've always thought yoga and dance had a lot in common. Do you think I could improve my technique by incorporating yoga into my routine? Definitely. Many professional dancers use yoga as a cross-training method to refine balance, mobility, and stability. But don't worry, we'll ease you into it. Laughs, that's comforting to hear. I don't think my body's quite ready for a full split yet. Laughs, no problem at all. Remember, yoga is not about perfection, but progress. Let's continue with some sun salutations, and then we'll move on to some balance poses. Sounds like a plan. Confession time, hey. Sometimes, during the standing balance poses, I feel like I'm going to topple over. Laughs, that's completely normal. Balancing requires practice, focus, and core strength. Just keep a steady gaze and focus on your breath. Remember, if you fall out of a pose, it's not a failure, it's an opportunity to try again. Thanks for the encouragement, hey. I love your positive energy. You make this class enjoyable and inspiring. Smiles, thank you, B. It's students like you that make teaching yoga so fulfilling. Let's finish strong with some relaxing stretches and a short meditation to calm the mind. Size, yes please. This has been such a rejuvenating practice. I can't wait to see where my yoga journey takes me next. Namaste, B. Thank you for sharing your practice with me today. Namaste, A. Thank you for being an amazing teacher. See you at the next class. Good morning, B. How are you today? Good morning, A. I'm doing well, thanks. How about you? I'm a bit tired, but overall doing well. Let's get right to it. What do you think about the new education policy we have been discussing? I think it has potential. I appreciate the emphasis on student creativity and critical thinking skills. Yes, those are definitely important. Do you have any concerns about how it will be implemented? One concern I have is the potential pressure it may put on teachers to conform to certain teaching methods. That's a valid concern. We will be providing support and training to teachers to ensure they feel comfortable implementing the policy. That's great to hear. Another thing I'm curious about is how we will measure success and effectiveness of the policy. That's a good question. We will be doing ongoing assessments to track progress and make adjustments as needed. Sounds like a solid plan. One last thing, have we thought about involving students in the policymaking process? Actually, we have. We'll be soliciting feedback and ideas from them throughout the implementation process. Wonderful. It's always good to involve the people who will be most impacted by a policy. Good morning, B. Thanks for volunteering to help out at the animal shelter with me today. No problem, Dr. A. I'm excited to learn more about taking care of animals. Well, we have a busy day ahead of us. We need to check up on all the animals and see if any of them need medical attention. That sounds like a lot of work, but I'm up for the challenge. Great attitude. Let's start with the dogs first. Do you know how to check their vital signs? Yes, I've been studying up on it. We need to check their temperature, pulse, and respiration rate. Correct. And if any of those are abnormal, we might need to give them medication or bring them to the hospital. I'm ready to assist you with anything you need, Dr. A. That's very kind of you, B. It's important not only to provide medical care for these animals, but also to give them love and attention. Definitely. They're so cute and I can't believe they don't have a home. That's why it's important to encourage adoption and spread awareness about responsible pet ownership. I completely agree. I'm going to post some pictures on social media to help get these animals adopted. That's a great idea. Let's finish up the medical checkups and then we can take some photos with the animals. Sounds fun. Maybe we can teach them some tricks too. I think they'd love that. Let's get started then. Good morning, sir. How may I assist you today? Oh, hey there. I think I need a little bit of help with my room. Sure thing. What seems to be the problem? My toilet keeps running nonstop and it's driving me crazy. I can definitely have our maintenance team take a look at it for you. Can I offer you anything else while we're at it? Actually, speaking of things driving me crazy, do you have any recommendations for some fun things to do around here? Of course. Have you tried checking out our famous Vegas shows or perhaps going to the casinos? Definitely plan on hitting the casinos a little later, but maybe something a bit more relaxed for now? Well, we do have some beautiful pools on the property. I myself enjoy lounging out and soaking up the sun. That sounds perfect. Mind setting me up with some towels? Absolutely not. Let me go ahead and grab you some fresh ones. Thanks so much. You've been a great help. No problem, sir. 
just doing my job to make your stay here comfortable and enjoyable. Hey, B. Have you heard of ISO 27001 Security Management? ISO 27001? Is that like some kind of new robot or something? No, not at all. It's actually a standard for information security management. Ah, got it. So what does this standard do? Well, it helps organizations manage and protect their information assets from potential security threats. Interesting. Can you give me an example of a security threat? Sure. It could be something like a hacker trying to gain unauthorized access to sensitive information. Oh, I see. So who needs to comply with this standard? Any organization that wants to ensure the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of their information. Wait, so does that mean my grandma's knitting club needs to comply with this standard too? Haha, <laughs> probably not. Unless they have really sensitive knitting patterns that they want to keep secret. Okay, fair enough. So how do companies go about implementing this standard? Well, they need to go through a rigorous process of risk assessment, implementation, and continuous monitoring. That sounds like a lot of work. It definitely can be. But in the end, it's worth it to ensure the safety and security of your organization's information. Makes sense. So what are some of the benefits of complying with this standard? For one, it can improve overall trust and confidence in your organization. It can also help you avoid potential legal and financial consequences of a data breach. Wow, I had no idea. Thanks for explaining all of this to me. Anytime, B. Always happy to chat about information security. Hello there. Welcome to our hotel in Canberra. How can I assist you today? Hi, I have a reservation under the name of Smith for two nights. Great. Let me check your reservation and prepare your room keys. Can I see your ID, please? Sure, here it is. Thank you. I see that you have booked our deluxe room. It's on the sixth floor and has a stunning city view. That's amazing. I'm really excited to see the view. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. By the way, did you visit any interesting places in Canberra already? Yes, I went to see the National Gallery of Australia and the Australian War Memorial. I'm planning to see some more places tomorrow. Wonderful. Canberra is a beautiful city to explore. Have you tried some Australian cuisine? Not yet. Any recommendations? Definitely try our meat pies or grilled kangaroo. And if you're feeling adventurous, try Vegemite on toast. It's a local favorite. Sounds interesting. I'll give it a try. Great. Is there anything else I can assist you with during your stay? No, thanks. You've been very helpful. It was my pleasure. Enjoy your stay and let us know if you need anything else. Thank you. See you around. Take care and have a great day. Hi there. I'm a project manager here at the insurance company. Nice to meet you. Hey, I'm a DevOps engineer. Great to meet you too. I hear we've got some exciting things to go over today. Yes, I'm hoping we can figure out a way to better connect our software development teams with our IT operations teams. It seems like they're always operating in their own silos. Yeah, I know what you mean. Communication can sometimes feel like pulling teeth. I'm thinking we might need to implement some agile techniques to get everyone working more efficiently. What do you think? Agile could definitely help, but we'll also need to make sure our monitoring and deployment tools are up to par. For sure. Do you have any recommendations on tools we could use? I'd suggest taking a look at Kubernetes or Docker. They're both great for streamlining the deployment process. Awesome. Thanks for the tip. So, tell me, how has your experience been with this type of integration in the past? Honestly, it can be a bit challenging, but it's always worth it in the end. Plus, it's a great way to build a strong and cohesive team. I totally agree. And, with our company's focus on innovation, I think this is a great opportunity to really push the envelope. Definitely. It's exciting to think about what we could achieve with better collaboration and alignment. So, let's get started then. I think this is going to be a really exciting project for us to work on together. I'm looking forward to it. Let's make great things happen. Hey B, how's it going? Not bad, thanks. How about you? I'm pretty good. So, I wanted to talk to you about the new internal website we're developing. Sure, what's up? Well, I was thinking we could use jQuery to make it more user-friendly and interactive. That sounds like a good idea. I was also thinking of using ASP.NET MVC 5 for the back end. That's perfect. 
we could really streamline the development process that way. Definitely. We could also use Bootstrap for the front end to ensure a consistent design. Great suggestion, B. I was also considering implementing some custom plugins to enhance the functionality. Sounds like a good plan. What do you think about using React for the front end? I actually prefer Vue.js, but I'm open to React. What do you think? I'm not really familiar with Vue.js, but I'm willing to learn. Awesome. We can also use Entity Framework to make database access easier on the back end. Perfect. And we could use LINQ to make querying the database more efficient. Excellent idea. We should also make sure the website is mobile responsive. Definitely. Responsive design is a must in today's world. Agreed. Well, I think we have a great plan going forward. Thanks for your input, B. Anytime, A. Let's get started on this project.